Friends, hello and welcome once again to a really exciting, very special hobby stream. I'm joined today by fan favorite Bridger Han. Bridger, how's it going? I'm doing great. Just got back from Vegas a couple days ago. Yeah. My voice is a little raw, so if you I sound You say weird. that, but you sound normal to uh, me. I don't know. Sounds a little weird to me. Okay. Maybe we'll get, uh, maybe we'll take a poll later on and see. Bridger, voice weird or voice not weird? Definitely weird. Yeah, okay. Um, Bridger, what are we doing today? This is a Bridger-inspired episode. It's it's my day. It's it's Gubbins' day. It's Gubbins' day. What is a Gubbin? Uh, you know, that's an excellent question. How Zach. do you define a Gubbin? I think Gubbins are all the extra bits. Okay. They're like accessories that you just don't need. You don't need to put on like that extra little pistol on your mm -hmm. Space Marines belt. Mm -hmm. Well, right? if you're WYSIWYG, you do need the pistol. But okay, okay. Let's fair. say the ammo pouch. The ammo pouch. Yeah. Or. Let's say you have a backpack. Uh, okay. Not on a space marine, obviously, because yeah. that would be a little weird if they yeah, didn't yeah. have their backpack. Yeah. Well, but what, would you call someone out for that though? Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah. You, what can just, you do? It doesn't it's actually. Just do like anything. your space marines look weird. Did you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, that's a good description. I think they're they're bits, right? They're extra. Bits. They're extra bits. Yeah. Um, you maybe don't need them to play. Maybe usually they're not part of WYSIWYG, but mm -hmm. also they're fun. Right. They just they add another layer of detail. Right? Yeah. It's the next level. I think that's I think that's fair. And we're gonna talk a lot about why maybe you actually want to wait to paint your gubbins. Mm -hmm. Um and some ways to paint a lot of gubbins all at once. We're actually painting gubbins for like two different armies. We are. At least two different armies. Maybe actually three. Probably three. closer to four three. is that. Four. Maybe in the realm of five armies. Four or five armies. We're painting a lot of gubbins today. Um, are you ready to do it? I'm ready. Okay, let's do it, guys. Let's get creative. So here are two of those armies, and these guys should look familiar to fans of Hobby Titans uh, and fans of Tabletop Titans, but especially Hobby Titans because we've painted these on our stream. Here in the front now you see these two Gargants. That is the Mega Gargant and the Man Crusher, uh, his little buddy. Little, not really though, right? And then here are my Beast Claw Raiders. Uh, these guys we painted on an eight hour stream. And I love all of these models. I love the destruction model, the destruction line in AOS. They're so cool. Yeah. And the new orgs, oh. Yeah. They're nailing it. And uh, we've got like very destruction minded people here because I'm all into the destruction, you're yeah. all into destruction, Adrian into destruction. So these gub these guys are gonna get a little more gubbined up than they already are. Mm -hmm. um, I really sort of consider these models finished, mm -hmm. but um, I'll be honest, I'm headed to uh, SoCal mm -hmm. next month um, with AOS and you know, I like my models to look super nice. So anything I can kind of do to like improve models even right. a little bit, um, you always want to be cognitive and maybe don't push it over the top. Like I don't need to glue skulls all over my ogors. Well, I could though. But I could, and I could. maybe uh, maybe a skull or two. Right. right? So um, that's what we're doing now. That's what I'm doing, and that's what Bridger's doing. Mm -hmm. We're go we're going to be kind of assembly lining some gubbins, and we'll go through. Uh, the fun part also about it is we have a lot of different processes here, mm -hmm. but they're all sort of easy. Like, Bridger's going to handle the metal, and we'll talk about his process. I'm going to be doing bone and skulls. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to be doing meat. So if you mm -hmm. have an army that takes meat, like sandwich meat, that's such steaks, a ribs, unique coven. Yeah. How many armies have meat as the well, coven? Well, I can think of only the destruction, right. like Ogors and yeah. Gargants, but also... There's some death armies. Flesh Eater Courts. They bring meat. Have meat. And we have a man off to the side that knows the answer to this also question. Also, Crute. Crute, yeah. Crute. Brett is back. He's hey, hobbying everyone. off to the side today. Um, off, off camera hobbying? Yeah, off camera hobbying. And it is true. Crute also like to take meat to yeah. battle with them. They eat people. They eat people. They eat anything. Um, so some armies do like sandwich meats and and, <laughs> uh, and ribs and sometimes just a big leg of cow we beef, have lamb. we have a leg of some animal here today we might get an id sometimes a whole chicken we have whole chickens here yeah. we maybe have like just, maybe they just got back from ren fair and they're like <laughs> <laughs> they've got a turkey leg on it, their belt it looks kind of like they got back from ren fair it they does. definitely live in ren fair like their life 
is Ren. They never left Ren. Fair. Yeah, Ogors are basically Ren Fair reenactors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so we've got all kinds of stuff. We also have kind of interesting birds. Mm -hmm. um, both another rare gubbin. Another rare gubbin. Yeah. I think what army has birds perched upon them? Probably basically just gargants and ogors. I think so. Yeah, and actually, I don't even know that any of my uh, Beast Call Raider kits came with the bird bits. Mm -hmm. Just the vulture, right? Which is a weapon. But I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna steal some of your your bird gubbins. I can't wait for somebody to correct us and tell us all the armies that have birds on them. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. I actually, if that is a thing, I would be interesting interested to know that. Um, okay, so you know what you're doing. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, Bridger's gonna get going on. Um, Metal. Mm -hmm. What colors are you using? Uh, well, this is like a quiz. Take us through your process. The main color we're going to be using is Lead Belcher. Lead Belcher. Which, as we know, is the same color as Iron Guts. Yeah? No. Um, uh, Iron Breaker? Iron Breaker. Oh, it is. I was close. What, were you, who, who Iron Guts that? is the unit. This was Brian on stream, I think, when we. No, there is a color, right? You're right, called Iron Breaker that Citadel makes. Mm -hmm. I, was that. Brian on stream? It must have been Brian. Or it might, might have been Brad. I can't... Brad, was that you? When, Sorry, we, when we were looking at uh, Lead Belcher yeah. and Iron Breaker and decided that visually... They are the same. They are the same. There's no, that somebody, was not me. Somebody told me. me. Yeah. I, th I think it was me. It was during oh, okay. one of our mega hobby okay. hunts. Somebody told me that when you put both of them down and then you wash them, they look different. Oh, I believe that. And that it I was... That. that they were offended we couldn't tell the difference. Oh. And I'm not that sophisticated, guys. Yeah, um... I, I do maybe believe that, um, but when you when you put both of them down, just on paper or, or whatever, they look the same. Uh, they do look the same. So we're starting with lead belchers. Yeah. It's gonna be a base coat of lead belchers. Sometimes we're gonna do Castellax bronze because I do like that bronze age look yeah. for my ogors. Uh, and then we're gonna be doing some some highlights or some lighter parts, not necessarily highlights. We're not doing edge highlighting with, with rune, fang, rune fang steel, Yeah. but you know, if there's like multiple armor plates or a part of an armor plate that we want right. the light to, to bounce off of. I'll tell you what, while you're going through the process, hand me a couple of your bits, just a few different ones. There you go. Some knives and... Uh, oh, do, you want knives? No, no, that's Here's okay. some knives. Yeah, and do a shoulder zoom. Let's do it. Um, and I'll kind of, just so folks at home can see, um, I'm gonna turn this guy down just a little bit. There we go. Just so folks at home can see the type of thing we're talking about. So go ahead, Bridger. Keep going. What else? What's the rest of the process here? Uh, yeah, so we're going we're gonna to lift up that color with Runefang Steel. Uh, maybe we will uh, highlight the bronze with Relictor Gold because Relictor Gold is basically just a lighter bronze. Yeah. Um, and we're going to be doing some of the armor plates in different colors. As you can see, there's... Maybe you can't see. Yeah, there, there's different plates. It, it is all black right now, but there are different plates. So Bridger, like, this is a shield, a separate shield here. So Bridger might just want to do like one of them all copper, but then after he does most of them lead belcher, he's kind of making a decision. He's saying, "Am I deciding this is all mostly silver or mm -hmm. mostly copper?" Mm -hmm. And if it's mostly copper, he's gonna he's gonna spray paint it. Well, bronze, right? Right. But I think most of these he'll he'll probably do. It's his call, but he'll probably do lead belcher mm -hmm. and then pick out some copper areas. Yeah. So um, you kind of when you're doing large quantities of metal, different plates and stuff like that. You, you're kind of making a call and you're saying um, what color is going to be like the main metal color and then I can airbrush that. And then which one do I want to go in and say, okay, that plate there will be bronze yeah. or that plate will be gold. We even have a, uh, a gold nearby here. And then at the end, we're going to come back and we're going to wash it with non-oil. We're going to wash it with non-oil and then we're going to do a dry brush uh, to bring it back up. Mm -hmm. and, and depending on what he's picked, um, I like to actually, one of my things with metallics is um, I like to bring up Lead Belcher with Rune Fang, mm -hmm. and I actually like to bring Castellax back up. Uh, we'll, we'll, if something's very heavy, heavily Castellax bronze, okay. we'll probably use Cephia mm -hmm. to wash it. Mm -hmm. And I actually like to bring bronze back up with bronze again. In fact, it's kind of we can also use a little bit of silver as well. But uh, with metallics, after I've washed them, I frequently actually like to dry brush them the, the with same the color, original metallic. With the original yeah. color, oh, I yeah. love it. Um, great. As for me, what I'm going to be uh, getting on right away, let's not mess around. Let's do something a little interesting, a little wacky. We're going to met, we're going to hop in right away with meat. Oh, do we know how to airbrush, how to paint meat? And the answer probably is for most people, they can take a guess. I certainly don't. Yeah, but let's let's show some meat recipes here. Well, tell me all about it. <clears throat> yeah. Um, okay. Here's what we're going to do. 
This is Galvorbach Red. We've been using this on the I stream. I love Galvorbach Red. It's a really nice color. It's so nice. It is a really nice color. So we're going to use Galvorbach Red. <laughs> and fans of the show will recognize this as our same recipe for redwood trees. <laughs> but the application is so different. Then we're going to use Word Bearer Red. And of course, <gasps> these two colors are designed to go together. Zach. Yeah. I use those two colors for my flesh eater cords. Oh, fun. Okay, so there's Word Bearer Red. Okay, then what we're going to do is use a little bit of uh, Garlsberg Crimson to kind of wash all of that down. You've been stealing my trade secrets, Zach. Yeah, this is pretty, I mean, that's flesh eater quartz, right? They have. <laughs> um, now, that said, there's some areas where we're, we'll need to get bone and stuff in there. So mm -hmm. uh, the ribs have bone and um, the steaks, there are like full. They're complete, like T-bone steaks? They're, uh, they're ribeye. Okay. Okay. Uh, I actually, I, I don't, yeah, I think that's ribeye. Uh, and, and we'll have to paint that a little bit of bone color before the wash because we actually want it to look bloody. Mm -hmm. And speaking of bloody, we also do have a uh, ghost tint, Minotaur ghost tint, the blood that the blood color we use. So um, we've got a lot of different meats here, including like full hands. So there will be some variations, but that's kind of like our main, mm -hmm. our main color. I'm excited. Uh, color situation. Yeah. Cool. I'm going to get going. I'm going to talk about what I'm doing. You know what you're doing. Let's do it. Let's get right into it. Let's yeah. get hobbying. Let's get hobbying. Now, um, there are some also some other things that I'm going to have to do different colors. Uh, for example, there's giant tongues. Um, okay. Yeah, and I think I'm going to do I, the tongue of you pink. Know? Yeah, I'm going to build up to a pink. You want me I to? did, I don't have the paints with me, but I did, because the, the zombie dragon yeah. has a big, gross tongue okay. that furls inside of his body. And I'll tell you what, the, the blood effect looks great on a pink. Yeah, I think we'll definitely do the blood effect on pink. I have that uh, in the eyes, the eyes of my... Uh... Oh, man, that thing's spooky. Yeah. Um, so the other thing we might do off to the side here, uh, leftover from the... Leftover is kind of a weird word, but leftover from the Alderi uh, board we made, that the Eldar board. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a little bit of Turbo Dork Mother of Pearl, which is the, kind of the incandescent color. Mm -hmm. So we might put that on some of the steak fat. Just light. So that when you kind of get up close and look at the steak fat, um, you can see that it's got like a little bit of, you know, that shimmery. Mm -hmm. A little bit of glisten. Yeah, glisten, right? That's clever. Looks like a steak. And Brett, you know, Brett and I were talking about it when we were doing the board. We were saying how like, we were starting to find out that we liked Turbo Dork used more in these like niche, like a little bit of air, a little bit of dry brushing here, mm. a little bit of, as opposed to just yes. completely covering something. Right. Yeah, I've seen so many pictures online of people doing entire models in Turbo Dork. And it, unless it's like Alpha Legion, like pre heresy yeah. Alpha Legion, it comes off being too much, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think I'm Completely agree. largely in agreement. Um, but I'm, I'm prepared to, to, maybe, to maybe be wrong. So, so we'll see. Broken Chef wants to know if the cow qualifies as a gubbin. Well, did we ever do a cow? No. Mm. Um, and that would have been perfect for And today. I will say, uh, the cow's kind of funny because I, I was looking at it here today. And um, I, I should talk about like what kind of gubbin uh, that I like, that I seek and that I went after um, as, I, as I was doing this here today. In your quest for the gubbin? Yeah, and I will say, um, one of the things I look for when I look for a gubbin um, that I want to work with, as opposed to a gubbin maybe I am not as excited to work with, is I want the gubbin to really be one or two materials tops. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, steak is meat and fat. There's also a hook. Mm -hmm. A lot of these things have hooks on them, at least mm -hmm. for, for the Ogor army. Um, so that's steak. Um, you know, a lot of the bones are just one material. It's just the skull or just bones. It's just bone. Yeah, um, I'm not really into some of the... Well, you yeah. know, cow Zach. Two materials. Yeah, but the, the thing about the cow and the reason I, I didn't I ended up not going with the cow today is because it's like hog tied kind mm -hmm. of. And oh then, it is, yeah. And then it's like it's hog tied one and then in addition to that it's, So there's rope you're saying. Yeah, it's supposed to be like a weapon. Well, you turn it into it's a conversion to make it into a weapon. Uh, it starts as just like hanging off your belt. Okay. Like it's a snack for later. Because you know how Ogors carry around a snack for later that's like, you know, a rib cage. And they're like, that's, you know, between lunch and dinner, I'm gonna get hungry on the march. So I'm gonna eat this rib cage. Okay. The gargants, same thing, but they're just bigger. So they'll hang a cow off their belt. I see, I see. 
Um, they they just more of a rib cage, realistically. Right? It's you know like rib cage plus the, the rest the of rest of the rib cage. Yeah, yeah. Cobra Commander says, uh, well, first of all, thank you, big thank you, Cobra Commander. He says, mm, thanks, hello, Cobra. gentlemen, how are you doing tonight? Uh, we're doing good. I'm doing great. Yeah, we've all been here for a bunch of the day already, kind of goofing off, listening to some '90s music. And some um, 2000s music. And some 2000s Much music. to Zach's chagrin. Yeah, I like 90s, okay. Um, but 2000s, not to my chagrin. Actually, uh, I, I when we talk about musical taste, I was in... Uh, Brett and I, are, that was kind of like our college decade, mm -hmm. uh, the 2000s. And mm -hmm. I was uh, studying music. So for 2000s, um, I really didn't listen to a lot of popular genre music. I mostly listened to jazz and... What people call like classical music. Mm -hmm. So um, now, why did you like? Why why did you add that? What people call? Like, well, is it like, not actually the, classical music. Yeah, like classical means like technically from. Oh, as opposed to like baroque or. Yeah, classical I technically think. is is very specifically 1750 to 1825. Right, but so, we're using it to refer to all piano, harpsichord music. Uh, or, or probably like any kind of music that's. Like art music is the term we use. Art music. That's the term. Yeah. As in the rest of music isn't art? Well, it's popular. <laughs> I mean, these are terms I went to grad school for. No, I, I'm not doubting the terms. Yeah. They're just very ivory tower terms. It, you know? Sure, sure. Stuff like that always is, right? Uh, but it's true. Um, uh, so mostly I was listening to jazz and art music. Um, <laughs> And so, like, my knowledge of that decade is, is, as far as popular music is concerned, is, like, a little bit, a little bit uh, lesser than... Funny thing, Zach. For me, it's the opposite. The 2010s, when I was in college, yeah. it's when I listened to the most music. It's like... Well, you weren't studying music, though. That's correct. So, like, I had to, like... Um, like, I was, I was playing jazz bass as a jazz bassist, so I had to, like, constantly be getting all these jazz albums and, mm -hmm. and listening to them and... And same with orchestral stuff, so just different. Yeah. Well, so what what do you got there? Uh, I've got the first layer of paint down here on the. This is the Galvor Bach red, and you can see it's pretty dark. So next, we're gonna do the Word Bearers red. I'm not like super worried about this kind of like where this is going. Um, I'm gonna be. I, I don't want to say random about it, but if some of the Galvor Bach red continues to show up, that's okay. Um, and the stakes. Here are really going to uh, the stakes are really they've never been higher. <laughs> yeah, the stakes very very funny. The stakes are going to really want this is the color where I really do want to mostly get a lot of the red on it. Um, but I'm also okay with some randomness here. By the way, uh, we do want to talk about what we are using. Your fans of the show will recognize these things. Uh, that we have here, these corks, wine corks, mm -hmm. and then this is like a like a wire that you can find kind of any any hardware store, and I don't exactly remember the uh, the gauge of this wire, but it, it's pretty much you can see visually what I'm working with. It has to be solid. It can't be like a thin like copper wire. Can you that, use that's uh, gonna fall. like a un unfurl a paper clip yeah, this for that? I think you probably could. That's that's probably a good idea, Brett. Actually, um, yeah, I, th I think that would work. Um, so then the final thing we use is called um, window. What what do we find it late? We we actually listed it under the video. You can see it under the link here. Brett, what did it end up being called? The window caulking. Window caulk. Yeah. Um Sealing caulk, seal caulk. We said there'd be a bunch of jokes. You, you guys said you were going to make jokes, and I, I didn't get it. You just made all of them for us, Zach. Okay. Every single one in a row. It's impressive. Yeah. So there's, uh, it, it's window sealing caulk. Yeah, there's some kind of weather stripping for windows. Yeah, exactly. And um, basically what you're going to do is take your, take your wine cork, uh, stick the... Uh, paper clip or paper clip in. wire. Or wire in, and then put the caulk on top, and that's it. And the caulk is like reusable, so you can just kind of keep, you can keep doing it. Yeah. Something I've also used a lot is uh, blue tack. Yeah, use blue tack. You, you can use blue tack. Um, blue tack works well too. I find blue tack uh, degrades over time. It does. Uh, this does not. But and blue tack's so cheap. You can th buy a this ton is of also it. very cheap. Yeah. Um, so it really doesn't matter what you use. The advantage to blue tack over this stuff is that um, 
it, it, it's got, your things are going to pop off real nice and easy. Mm -hmm. With this, you, we, we talked about this process, you need a quick yank. And I told the story about how I let Brett borrow a bunch of it, and I forgot to tell him that part. And he came back and was like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really love this. Um, <laughs> and it turned out it was because I forgot to tell him that. And I, whatever it was, Brett, I, 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 I'm always apologetic. He just got it like all over his miniatures. Re residue of this I've stuff. found that blue tech has a similar problem if you leave it on too long if it like sets oh yeah it tends to like harden but become gooey everywhere else and then it can be difficult for yeah you know it's funny um, by the way we should do uh, that for uh, what Megan's saying in chat for her and John she wants a wrench yeah and John too John also wants a wrench? Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. We don't have, um... Liter not, yes. We I thought they we meant... Don't have, we don't have hot boys and girls in here yet, but you know what? One day... I can fix that. One day Hobby Titans will get big enough to have our own, uh... Spam bots? Our own spam bots. Your own Slaneshi robots? Yeah, and at that point, we'll be glad that we've got some watchers. Well... Um... So, yes. Thank you, Ross. Oh, thank you, Ross. Hey, guys. What's your favorite model in the Black Templars preview? Brett, how are the Blade Guard? I'm painting some now. Brett, how you are know, the Blade Guard? I almost brought Blade Guard tonight to work on. Um, and I realized I needed to do a little more decision making on like what bits I wanted to, to mm -hmm. paint which colors. Mm -hmm. And I was not of a mind to do decision making tonight. I just wanted to, That's fair. to execute. Yeah. So I just brought some models that I already had uh, a scheme figured out for and I'm just, I'm just cranking through them. I'm painting some Tau stuff tonight. But, uh, yeah, the Black Templar look amazing. Uh, so many robes, so many swords, so many knights. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just really jazzed. Uh, I think favorite model. Mm -hmm. um, I like the Assault Intercessor is just like one of my favorite. Like the basic Space Marine troop is like one of my favorite new GW sculpts, mm -hmm. just because it's so dynamic. And so I'm excited to see what sort of Black templar options I can apply to Intercessors. But mostly, I think, like, single favorite model is the Sword Brother. He's, like, the sergeant for the, for the Initiate Neophyte squad, mm -hmm. the Crusader squad. Uh, he, his pose is great. Um, I don't know. I, I don't love the uh, Helbrecht model. I know there's, like, really? all, so many memes about, like, the guy wiping his sword. Mm -hmm. Like, the pose is epic. Yeah. He's, like... I don't know if you guys have seen it. He's like yeah, stabbed yeah. an orc. He's pulling his sword out of the orc, and he's got a servitor like wiping down his sword as right. he's pulling it, as it's like being extracted from the orc, uh, which is is like hilarious and epic. Um, but yeah, I don't love the idea that like everywhere I go, I don't like my models carrying their like terrain around with them on the table. Right. Like I don't pose my models on like epic terrain pieces because it feels a little weird to me. But and similarly like. What if I'm not facing orcs? Like, what if I'm facing somebody else? Anyway, right. and I know I could like cut all that off if if I don't. Love yeah, it. like, are you overthinking it? Am right? I overthinking yeah. it exactly? Um, Brett, I, I you know I saw the story real quick. The, I, I think before you joined our local gaming club, there's a guy who showed up, and we, we had a requirement that you had to base your models. Yeah, and he had a fully painted army, and it wasn't based. And we said, "Well, you're gonna have to base your army." He was like, "Oh, I, I don't want to because um, if I base it like." And I'm playing on a snow mat, and I base desert like, and we were like, sorry. And uh, <laughs> he played his three trial games and never came back. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, he, he was really like, on, wow. He really didn't, so it was. He was an firm. It, right? He was yeah. very firm on that. Yeah. No, I think I think there's like a fine line between. I mean, GW with their with their centerpiece models is going more the direction, especially in AOS, like the direction mm -hmm. of these like little mini dioramas yes. on on their bases. And if I'm honest, I don't love it. Uh, but again, like, I think it's very, it's very easy if I buy this model to just like undo all of that, cut it off, snip right. it off. I can remove the orc, I can remove the servitor, whatever, it's fine. Um, but yeah, like, uh, I think my favorite model is the, the sword brother in the squad. The, honestly, the Emperor's Champion looks amazing too. Yes. Um, I am probably not going to use that one just because I have sort of a, an older Emperor's Champion. Mm -hmm. uh, that has some sentimental value for me. I collected it from a friend who got out of the hobby. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep that. Um, but, um, yeah, the Sword Brother, Sword Brother looks dope. He does look pretty cool. He's well, coming for you. What do you like, Bridger? Uh, I mean, the Hellbrook model, just because I've seen so many memes, specifically the Servitor, 
that's doing the wiping. Yeah. I just want to clip that off and put it on every other model that I've seen a meme of because <laughs> it's pretty pretty great. Yeah. It's As uh, we know, I only do this hobby for the memes. For the memes. It's um yeah, it's interesting, right? I, I feel like I, I, I understand what you're saying, Brett. Like, how much do we want these models to have things like a you know, my base has like another dude on it and now like that's it feels like less like he's in battle and more like he's posing for right, a photo for a picture, or right. something, right? Um, but like I said, like you can undo balance. all that stuff. It's very easy to get rid of it, but for folks who are jazzed about it, I'm glad they include it. Mm -hmm. uh, but man, his helmet looks sweet. He yeah. looks... Helbrick's, Helbrick's there to... I'm not going to... If I end up getting that model, I'm not going to do the, the bald head. His helmet looks <laughs> amazing. That's how I felt about a lot of characters where they have like two head options, helmet on, helmet off. Yeah. And I'm like, man, those helmets look way too cool to have helmet off. <laughs> exactly. Like why would like Shadow Sun's yes. helmet is super dope. Yes. And they're like, but well, you could have her face too. Nah. I'll go with the helmet. Yeah. Yeah. Even the ghost kills like that, right? They let you do it. Yeah. I have three ghost kills. They didn't model any of them open. <laughs> they're like, they look too cool. Um all right. Well, what uh, you, you you're going through? You're yeah, yeah. You want to see? Going so, so much faster than me. Yeah. So um, I'm painting a little bit of the bone here on the stake. Um, the red has all been air airbrushed already. Although a couple of the stakes stuck together and therefore left a big kind of dark area that I'm gonna have to interact with. So I'm gonna do that. You guys can see those right here, still black. Um, I might actually just hit them with a different color. I don't know, maybe I'll hit them with a little bit of brown. Why not? Could be interesting. Some some meat that's gone off, maybe? Yeah. Or some uh, meat that's been cooked in advance. Yeah, cooked a little bit. Or maybe it's from an animal that isn't red flesh. Yeah. Well, there mm. will be red here also, so it'll be like a blend, but yeah. That's, well, that's the blood side. Oh, yeah. Well, very, very true point. What if it's not red blood? Oh, here we go again. Here we go again. <laughs> um... <laughs> Now, by contrast, there's like this layer of this ring of fat around these stakes that you guys can see I'm playing with here. I'm actually going to like just hold these, push them all together, and just airbrush it. Um, I don't feel like brush painting that, like ring around. Oh, stake. I'm doing all kinds of tiny little fiddly brushwork things. Yeah. That's, I mean, for me, that's what Gub Day is about. It's about like taking that time to go the extra step, do the fiddly little brush things, because that's you're taking your model to the next level. Yeah. Right? I, I see. took this shield. Here, check that out. I did the thing you said specifically not to do, and I was like... No, I didn't say not to do no, it. I'm gonna I, do it. You, you were worried to be a lot of work, but you can see it's not too bad, right? Because you're just tracing, like, I, I don't know how you did it, but one, one way of doing it is just pretty much like tracing the side yeah. of your brush along mm -hmm. the raised areas. And that's, uh, frankly, that's one of the reasons we love Games Workshop models. They kind of make their models easy to paint. Even all these little, like, ridiculous details they, they, they add in there. And I just had an epiphany also, speaking of the, bur the part that did not get airbrushed, mm -hmm. I'm actually not going to paint it at all. When I use that gub, I'll just have that part of the stake up against the person's body. There you go. So whoever it is. Bridger and I are going to split these gubs up and add them to um, some Gargants and mm -hmm. some Ogors. Mm -hmm. so, um, and some BCR. Oh, yeah, and of course the, the BCR. Sorry, that's, I guess, what I meant when I said Ogors, but also your Ogors. But also Ogors. O Ogors. Well, I imagine we're going to have another Gubbins run before, uh, before then. Yeah, I have, like... A lot? A hundred of those barrels. Yeah, we got to paint a lot of barrels. I don't know. We don't have to do a hundred, but we well, can do, like, What's 20. in the barrels? Uh, it depends. It's context-sensitive. Um, Ogors drink a lot, so you could always just say it's a, it's a barrel of ale. Um, they like to trade. They do these trades with the gloom spike gets for their yeah, mushrooms. For their mushrooms, because they also like to get high. Yeah. Um, they they make like a mushroom beer or something. But yeah. they also use powder weapons. So like the oh. um, the iron blaster lead lead some kind of blaster. Iron, it's a lead belcher. No, lead belcher is the fantasy name. They renamed it for for Sigmar. It's the iron blasters now or something. Iron Blaster is the artillery piece. There's also the Goblin Scrap, Knoblar Scrap Launcher, mm -hmm. and the Infantry Squad with Guns. I don't remember their name. It used to be Lead Belcher, but now it's something else. Yeah. But yeah. they can have powder kegs. So, you know, it's, it's context sensitive. Context sensitive. Uh, well, thank you, Disciple of Asmodai. Working on my Bloody Rose tonight, adding some snow to bases. Excited to have a weekly group paint night in some ways. 
any Titan members planning on going to New Orleans in December? December? There's Are there events in December in New Orleans? We almost did. That we was, talked about it. The New Orleans Open, I thought, was... Oh, yeah, New Orleans Open already happened, right? Right, in the past. Hmm. What was it? I don't know. Maybe... I don't uh, know about in December. At, to be honest, we don't really have December, like... We have so much planned between yeah. now and the end of November that we haven't gotten to December yet. I, I'm, I wouldn't be adverse personally to seeing if I could do something like that. Um, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, I have December's too far out in advance. I have one day reserved in December, and that is Christmas Day because I will be watching The Matrix. And is that what you do every Christmas? No, the new Matrix movie is coming out. On oh, Christmas. I see. That's the, Matrix the release Resurrection. Day. Yes, oh, exactly. That's, that's fun. I will be there. Day of. And John, if you want to go with me. Go for we it. Should, I, I'm, t I'm down for that. You coming? Well. All right. Totally Zach, you nope. coming? Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. Right. Maybe. Um, okay. Zach, how do you feel I, about the Matrix trilogy? Hot take incoming. Hold your the breath. The Matrix uh -oh. trilogy, it's actually fine. Zach's going to say his favorite Matrix was the third one. No, I feel like I don't have like a strong opinion one way or another on the Matrix. And you know anyway. what my favorite part about the third Matrix movie was? The guy with all the monitors? The guy with all the monitors? Yeah, like the... I remember that part. What? No, I was going to say the Dread Knights. Oh, those were pretty cool. <laughs> the entire army of Dread Knights. That was pretty cool. <laughs> the, he had a name. He was like the gatekeeper or something. Oh. There was a guy in a white room and a bunch of TV the screens. Architect. The architect, yeah. Yeah, that was a dumb scene, but I, I loved it. I guess they were more in Victor <laughs> War suits than Dread Knights. They didn't shoot psychic bullets. Hmm. Mm. That's a distinction I hadn't really thought of. Yeah, you know what? Again, it's a trilogy that mostly came out at a time of my... <laughs> same, same thing with the music, honestly. Like, most, like, movie... Most pop culture from that time period... That started like in the in the late '90s. I, I remember being in high school still, mm -hmm. but I think the bulk of it came out while I was in college. And I, again, kind of the same thing. It just like uh, flew out of my ra under my radar. And then, like later on, like even maybe as recently as five, seven years ago, I started like going back and experiencing pop culture from that decade. Um, yeah, it was great. Yeah. How do you feel about Ghostbusters? Well, that's from a very different time period, right? Uh, uh, is that kind of what you're getting at, or just a totally total change of topic? Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters wasn't from the '80s. Was it really? This guy. No. Guess, Ghostbusters <laughs> was the '80s. This guy, people. Hold on. Well, but all of this was essentially before I was born, though. So the Matrix. It was all lumped in together. The, well, the Matrix wasn't before you were born, but you were. You I was been young. not you of an young. age to. To understand like, it at all. Oh, okay, okay. It yeah. was all past stuff. I see, yeah. Right? Rick Moranis, yeah, that's the 80s. Huh. But Ghostbusters 2. Ghostbusters 2 is the 80s. Ghostbusters 3. Uh, that I don't actually Got know. Got you on that one. And there were a few Maybe Ghostbusters. Maybe the 90s. There were a few Ghostbusters. It might have been early 90s, yeah. Um, but yeah, those are really, those are really 80s movies. Well, I love those. What do you think about those? They're they're great. I think actually two is the better one, right? Isn't no yeah. two two is the one with uh, Stay Puff. Mm. Sorry, two is the one with uh, Vigo. Vigo. Vigo Mortensen. Yeah. No, well, but not Vigo. Just Vigo. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, the Ghostbusters movies are cool. I remember watching Ghostbusters two as like uh, I don't know, must have been nine or ten year old, mm -hmm. and it being just the most scary movie I'd ever seen. Ghostbusters the original? The second <clears throat> Ghostbusters. Movie. Oh, Ghostbusters yeah. 2 Ghostbusters was much darker. It was very dark yeah. and very scary, mm -hmm. especially for as a as a young kid. Well that was they had slime in the sewers in that one, right? Yeah, they were crawling around the sewers. Yeah. Oh man, it was terrifying. Yeah, that they, they went a lot harder on that one. Interesting. Um yeah, I think that the Ghostbuster movies are, are cool. Yeah. But not from the same decade. <laughs> well, I've learned my lesson on that one. Yeah, that's okay. <clears throat> I mean like I don't know. So people start naming like those like old sitcoms from the fifties and stuff, and I I don't know. I can't believe you or... said Ghostbusters Two was your favorite though. Uh, maybe, maybe I'm. Maybe it was I'm, maybe widely I'm panned. Was it was it? okay. Maybe I'm wrong. It was though. like the reason they stopped doing Ghostbusters. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm wrong. Something the the second one, maybe RoboCop. Something the second one was better <laughs> than the first one. Uh, maybe Terminator. 
Oh, Terminator. Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but although the first one's very cool, it doesn't get it doesn't get the love it deserves. Michael Bean. <laughs> uh, Gozer was the first Ghostbusters, Dan. Yeah, Gozer is. Yeah. That's in the she opens the fridge. Yep. And then and then uh, but man, yeah, that whole like gatekeeper keymaster. That's thing. where I was getting gatekeeper. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That was very 80s, now that I think about it. Yep. That would not have flown in the 90s. Hmm. Uh, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking from like a PC standpoint? Well, I don't, it... Because <clears throat> I don't know. Well, it real quick, for a lot can, longer than that. <laughs> yeah, can we get a zoom? I just want to show people here. So here you go. We got a little bit of, uh, a little bit of glistening on our fat layer <laughs> there with, uh, with the mother low. This, so this, this color is... You guys will recognize the color we used on all of our Aldari terrain. And it's kind of fun to like just accumulate these paints from different projects. Like I literally just used the red wood paint and the, the uh, paint from the Aldari project to get this kind of like fat glistening on these, uh, to actually to paint these whole stakes. So um, these guys are almost done. I just need to do the hooks on them. Um, and then there are still some other meat left to do, but we are cruising along here. I think you're doing a great job. Well, thanks, Bridger. Now, some of these other ones, uh, not this, not the ribs, but some of these other ones, we've kind of like built this red up. We did uh, Word Bears red, then we did Galbvor Bach red, and then we did the, um, I forget what it's called, uh, Garoberg, Garoberg, Garoberg Crimson, which is GW's red shade. Um, Looks so good. Like the red, red shade, not the magenta E1, which is, is a really cool color, but I forget what it's called. Um, and so now over top, some of these, uh, like if it's just like red meat, like a steak or something like that, then, or the ribs, then we're going to pretty much be done with them uh, as they are. We're going to add a little bit of blood effect to them later on. But if it's something that I want to do to have like some kind of layer of skin over top of it maybe, or it's like poultry or something like that, I'm going to put another little color over top. So, Bridger, if we can zoom one more time. Let's do it. Um, I'll show you guys. So here are the whole chickens, and then here are the, here's this odd animal leg. I actually don't know what animal leg this is. It looks like a chocobo leg. It looks like a chocobo leg, but chocobos, of course, not in 40k or Age of Sigmar lore. So not yet, not yet. Not until they do that collaboration. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't know what they are, um, but what I'm going to do is I've got a. Uh, a color I'll be using a little bit later, Talarian Sand. This is a color I'm going to be using on Bone a little bit later. And what I'm going to do is just kind of really carefully get like a thin coat down on these steaks. Not steaks, on these like, on these chickens. Or whatever these legs are, I really don't know. Uh, you can see I'm, I'm actually just checking to make sure I like the way it's coming out and I'm just running them through it a couple times. And again, I, I don't really know what animal this is. And then I'll maybe go and hit a, hit a little bit of highlighting spots there. Uh, lots of this stuff is going to be really made exciting looking from the, um, from the blood that's going to be all over it. So there are these things. You can see like the red is peeking through underneath to make it look like some kind of like, you know, bloody situation, meat situation going on here. Um, the chickens, I'm also actually going to hit with this color. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to not hit the chickens with this color. I'm going to hit the chickens with a different color. Actually, those, I'm going to hit the chickens light, with white. Is that light meat or dark meat, Zach? Um, these, these animals, the, the, the thighs, the, un, the unidentified legs. I don't know. Um, I'm kind of doing it like, like somewhere in between. Okay. I don't know an animal. What does that mean? Like maybe, uh, maybe like a pork leg. Okay. So it's white meat, but it's the other white meat. The other right. white meat. Thanks, Matt Baker. He says, hey, guys, uh, making steady progress on my Aztec custodies. Uh, and Dex is painting on his first drone tonight. How would you paint obsidian swords and spears? Ooh. Oh, I have a recipe for obsidian. That sounds so cool. Yeah, I have a recipe for obsidian that I, that I like, uh, Matt. What I do for obsidian is I do use a very stark black, so no Corvus black, but something like Abaddon black, or we know the Reaper calls it dragon black, something like that, super dark black, like stark black. Um, and then what I do is I, I will edge highlight it, 
Uh, for, first of all, if you want to put a little shading, like if it's a little bit of a larger thing, you're just talking about swords and spears, so they may not need this. They're pretty big. The custodies swords? Oh, okay. Well, then, um, what you can do, the color that I think really makes Obsidian look nice is um, GW calls this color Incubi Darkness, and it's a super dark um, greenish blue. Very, very mm. dark. Uh, <clears throat> Minotaur also has this color. They call it Lurking Moss. And I'm sure other companies have it as well, but I don't know what it is. And it's not a color mm -hmm. that just has a name, but the way I would describe it is very dark. Um, you know, you kind of look at it. Uh, I always sort of thought of it as blue, but I had a friend kind of describe it as like green almost. So it's like a very dark greenish blue. Um, and I like to edge highlight or do like any kind of shading with, with that, like with a super dark greenish blue for obsidian. So... The final step then, of course, is to usually you want to do a high gloss. So you might have to go in and paint it on by hand, but like a Vallejo gloss or something like that. Um, so stark black, uh, some kind of dark bluish green, super dark bluish green I'm talking here. Um, and then finally, make sure you high gloss the whole thing. That's my obsidian. So you're saying don't use Vallejo blue green? It's too light. Too light. It's Got too it. too light, yeah. Try Vallejo blue green. No, it's too light. Well. If, if it was big enough and you need to like kind of build up a little bit more, you could you could go up. But even I, even then, I think it would be too light. Okay, so I did just get this chicken done. You guys want to see how the chicken looks? Oh, let's take a look. And it, the chicken looks like if you've ever seen a fresh chicken, mm -hmm. or if, which is what I imagine this would be, or if you've ever seen a duck. So again, we want to hide like the red. Um, there's a meat that's kind of like a poultry and kind of like a red meat duck. So we want to kind of okay. hide like the like the red and the pink underneath of the cream color to get a good look on the chicken or on the whatever this poultry is. Um, okay, great. So there are those guys done there. They also need their hooks finished. And then the last, oh, I also have this, these hands and I, I don't know what these hands are. The size of these hands make me think that they're just other ogres. I mean, they could be. Ogres tend not to discriminate on what they kill and eat. Yeah. So we're going to give them the same color as the chicken. But we're just going to maybe do a little bit more than we did with the chicken. And I'm just being kind of careful here when, as I airbrush. But, you know, my, you guys know I love this airbrush technique of building up a color underneath, like reds and using the washes to get in the recesses. And then after that, um, hitting them with a light color, like a white or a shanti bone or something like that. So you look at that and, like, it's, again, kind of almost a situation where you're like, what color is that exactly, right? Um, but if you look, you can tell that it's warm. There's, like, red underneath. I also think with these stakes, this incandescence is super cool, but it's a little too much. So what I'm going to do is hit them also one more time. I'm going to clump them all together here. Okay, so I don't get the actual like center of the stake where, where I want it to remain a little more red. Clump them all together like that. And then I'm going to hit them with this color a little bit too just to chill the incandescence out a little bit. Because we've all seen that, but we don't see like when we're in the grocery store. And like you're like, oh wow, the steaks are all shimmering. <laughs> you see like later on when you're like cutting the steak and you're like, okay, oh, there's a little bit of incandescence on, the, on my steak. Um, yeah, that would be a little weird if your steak was just shining. Yeah. It was like flash photography as you walked past the butcher aisle, you know? Exactly. So we don't want the, the incandescence to be too, uh, too in our face. Cool. Um, Okay, so our meat is mostly done except for one, which is that I need to do the tongue. How are you doing, Bridger? I've kind of gone off script, and I'm doing all the little, all the little a, things that, because I haven't, I'll tell you what, Zach, I haven't mm -hmm. been able to hobby. So you've just gone rogue. In like just, six weeks, I think. Oh, that's too bad. And um, so I've just been pulled in. I've been drawn in by the appeal of essentially doing a coloring book. That's okay, though, because you know what? Those shields are going to go a long way. We're going to be able to add them to... Like you said, multiple armies. Um, they're gonna really, they're gonna really help a lot. And as we saw, you know, I told you not to do that because it would take time, but it's fine. I'm just we've got in the time. We've got time. We've and got then time. I showed you. I went to show you how I didn't do it on my Frost Lord. And then you did. I do did. It. I had done you it on did my do Frost, it on Frost Lord. Lord. Because it looks good. Right. So um, to totally cool. It's like a an easy kind of mindless thing to do. Yeah. Can we get a? Let's get a top zoom on what you're up to. All right. Let's get. Uh, that's me over here. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be a little hard to see. It's, it's quite a, quite a detailed. Here, I'll just pop over here. 
I'll just hold it at your station. Yeah, there we go. So I'm just doing like all of the raised edges. <laughs> Good bro. Oh, my head. Sorry. <laughs> just doing all the raised edges on the shields. Um, Instinct. The shields on the right. Good brushwork. Oh, thank you. I, you know, the lack of practice is really doing me justice here. Well, it's about kind of just like looking at what the model gives you, right? And you're like, hey, these are raised, yep. and I can just, I can just drag my brush along that. Yeah. I did one gold, and I, I am less happy with how that came out because I think it needs more coats. The gold is very. Oh, maybe. I've noticed that that Castlex so, bronze really holds up well. The bronze like, is awesome. It, it goes over top of like their silver. It goes really over nice. everything. Speaking it's of a paint, cool. I found that I like a lot. Um, we have like all these Reaper paints behind us, and they're they're great. Um, but I found this clear magenta. They have a clear line, mm -hmm. and I love the clear magenta on um, like like Talston, wherever there's kind of like blood and meat about, mm -hmm. which is like something I've been painting more and more these days because of the Ogors. So I'm gonna hit the tongue, which are the tongues which are currently red. I'm gonna hit them. This one came came loose, but I'm gonna hit them with this magenta. And look look at this. Look at this weird kind of like reddish pink. It's just I don't know. It's beautiful. I love this. Have you guys ever eaten tongue, Brett? Bridget? No. Brett I has. Have. Yeah, yeah, of course he has. Wow. Um, what does that mean? Because he's from. Uh, well, you are too. Like we have like a real Rust Belt crew here today. But um, you have not eaten a lot of the weird food that Brett and I have had. <laughs> right. Like Rust when Belt. I think Rust Belt, I think like boring white like barbecues and salads. You're from Ohio. Yeah. Barbecues and salads. That's my point. You're from Ohio. He's from Michigan. I'm from Pennsylvania. That's the Rust Belt. That's literally yes. those three states like, are the Rust Belt. We didn't eat tongue. We ate like oh, chicken nuggets, right? Like we did Oh, I see. We did we didn't eat adventurous oh. food. We had so, pasta. So the, the part of Michigan that I'm from is like Everyone hunts. Ah. And everyone. Same, same where I'm from, yeah. Everyone has a cow guy. Right. So, like, yeah. you. Everyone has a chest freezer and everyone has a cow guy. So, like, one of my coworkers had, like, has, like, 12, has, like, 12 cows. Right. And once a year, he'd take one to the butcher and he'd come in and be like, hey, does anyone want cow? And he'd, and he'd just he'd cut the him, tongue out of the cow and no, put him back. You'd give him, like, 300 bucks and he'd show up with, like, a quarter cow wow. in, like, 12 coolers. You'd bring all your coolers to work, and he'd, he'd give you like all the all the meat. And you'd get like two ribeyes and three, you know, six pounds of roast and twenty pounds of ground meat, and you could you specify all the cuts. And anyway, at the end of all that, you're like, do you want the soup bones? Do you want the tongue? Do you right. want the yeah. heart? Do you want the tail? Uh, all the all the parts that aren't just like steaks and roasts. And, and you said and yes to all of it. Well, the first time I did, because I had never had any of it, and I was like, what do I do with a heart? Is that interesting? Do right. I, do I like it? I don't well, know. cow heart is big, right? It's they have huge. large hearts. Yeah. I ended up not liking it, tongue, mm -hmm. the tongue and the heart. And, uh, They're tough, right? It's very, it's very like in super intense flavor. It's hmm. very meaty flavored, mm -hmm. um, if that makes sense. I don't think I would like it's that. Very, very intense, yeah. Um, Mineral? Minerally, yeah. yeah. So uh, you put it in the food processor and like make a pate. And you make a and then you and then you pour it out onto a baking sheet and you make dog biscuits. You put it in the oven. Much for, better. For like, like 250 <laughs> the story degrees. Story improved. <laughs> Turns out dogs make, are just like into anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you make dog biscuits with it. Pureed cow heart. Yeah. Mm. Heart, heart is heart's iffy. Um, you know, heart, heart is always iffy. I think in most animals, livers are good. I like liver, but. Um, and tongue, uh, I think I've only had tongue once in my life, and I'm not sure that I, I, I think, uh, actually, Melody had mentioned that, that that these look like livers. I did just add pink, Bridger, if we, we can maybe I'll zoom in look. so you can kind of see. So now they probably Ooh, hopefully don't look. Those look like tongues. Quite as much like liver. Um, but yeah, um, I, I think from my recollection, it was pretty similar to liver. Um, and by the way, Melody, thank you so much. Melody uh, hooked me up with some Daughters of Cain, and I super appreciate that. Uh, so I, I, will, uh, I need to respond to your message, Melody, but oh, thank you so much. That's very kind of you, Melody. I saw that you had asked while I was in Vegas, which is not a great time to ask me questions because boy did questions pile up while I was there. But you had asked about an after party for LVO, and I was told that Tuesday that question was answered. But if that wasn't answered, message me again. Yeah. Okay, now what I'm doing, I'm jumping ahead a little bit because we're going to have to use this paint again. 
But if you guys want to check in, sorry, Bridger, I keep telling you to. No, you're good. Um, if you guys want to see, so now what I'm going through on these meats is I'm going through and I'm spraying them with um, this Vallejo ghost tint called Fresh Blood. This is all over my my destruction army. So uh, cool. And it, it stays glossy and it looks like blood. Um, this means, by the way, that I probably, since I'm doing this now, probably won't varnish these pieces, but that's okay. Uh, then here is my, here are my little odd legs. Oh, you spray on the blood. Yeah, sometimes you do, you can do a little bit of both. Uh, for, with these little goofy legs, I'm going to spray on like kind of in the same area. And then they have this spot right here where like clearly the animal was ripped, <laughs> the one leg was ripped from the socket. Oh, that's... You guys can see. So I'm really getting in gross. A, yeah, I'm really getting in a, a spot right there like that. The chickens, I don't know that I want to spray with too much blood, whatever this bird is. Uh, but I, I, you know what? I, I'm lying. I want to spray with a little bit of blood. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> okay. So there's that. And that's it. That's what those guys are going to look like. So our, our whatever weird animal leg here is done, other than the hooks. I do, have, I do have to go back and hit the hooks real quick. Here is our steaks and our weird hands. Uh, the hands were going to make very bloody. I want the hand to look like it was almost like a skinned type thing oh, situation. That's... Man, Zach, this is kind of an October show. This is a little gruesome, actually, yeah. as, we're get, as we're moving along here. I, I do have a question for you, Zach. Yeah. I, went, I got a little creative here. I did gold on that, and I want you to tell me what you think. I think it looks great. And if I did, like, three more the same way? Sure. And oh. remember, we also have the pens nearby if you want to... Oh, we do have pens, but I'm having such a good time doing this. Yeah, but it depends in the video description, so that means you have, you to, have use to use them, them at some yeah. point. Well, we today. mentioned them, and I feel like that's yep, got to almost as good as using them. <laughs> at least got to put them out on the table so that they're visible. They are on the table. And I can pretend that I use them. Great. Um, these also have a hook at the bottom that I'm going to have to paint, which means that after I paint that hook, I'll probably use a hand brush to paint a little more blood on them. That's how we do it. Yeah. Um, but I do love my... Uh, th actually, I've used this a long time ago. And then Bridger's the one who brought this back. Oh, it's so the, cool. The ghost tint blood, yeah. Yeah. Um, but really you can good. also use blood for the blood god. It's pretty much the same thing. Well, I went... The story is... I went to our local... Game store. Game, mm -hmm. game castle. Mm -hmm. And I asked them if they had any... Blood, blood effects. And they gave me this weird look, like... Excuse me? Like, what this isn't you? a spirit Halloween store. Right, like, <laughs> uh, sir, this is a McDonald's. Of course we don't have blood. What are you doing? Yeah. Um, but then I found some of the, the employees who knew more about what I was talking about. Okay. Because, like, they have some TCG employees who are like, well, it's not Yu-Gi-Oh! or Pokemon, so I don't know. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, so I, I talked to a real employee, and they were like, no, we're actually out of everything, but you could try this. Yeah. And I loved it. It was great. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, I actually like it too. And Blood for the Blood God is, is, is also good. Um, okay, so I, can may I borrow the lead yeah. voucher? Um, I'll show you guys what I'm going to do here super quick. I'm going to be real fast about this. These hooks all over all of this meat don't need a, 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 a million hours of your attention. So what we're going to do here to get the metal is really just kind of for the stakes. Since they are already on this cork, um, uh, when Bridger gets a chance, I oh, am I got it. so sorry, Bridger. No, you're good. You can see I'm even painting the, the rod, the little metal wire, don't care, just kind of going quickly across the top and catching all the hooks, uh, the, the top, the loops, the eye of the hook up here. Ogres have a lot of hooks. They do. They're kind of like they have a butcher sub theme. They do have a butcher sub theme. It's kind of cool. A lot of their characters are butchers. I mean, one of the characters literally is called a butcher, right? Yeah. And several of their characters have the butcher keyword. Yeah. But it's like, it's because food is so central to their um, to their culture. Gut yeah. magic, right? Yeah. They're, they're all about food. That's like the number one thing they care about in the entire world. They've got a cow guy. They they're do. all cow guys. Yeah. They, they know their way around a, a corpse of a cow, you know? Yeah, so this is almost like an overbrush. You guys can see that I'm doing here. This there's like this the spike thing that sticks out, and they've just like stuck this the meat on it. And so I'm really basically doing like an overbrush on this thing. 
Uh, and I'm keeping them all nice and lined up together here and just hopefully you guys can see. Yeah, there we go. Just kind of tracing my brush lead belcher across. Um, if, if a color doesn't get covered, that color is going to be red. And that's okay because this there would be blood and stuff on this hook. So this is another one of those situations where you're like setting yourself up so that you can your laziness uh, is it's called working smart. I live in the <laughs> south and that's what they like to call everything. <laughs> whenever they whenever whenever they take their time on something, they say, "Well, I'm not working. I'm not lazy. I just am a smart worker." Hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a little suspect. In thing. this particular case, I think it's the right terminology. And sorry if I offended anyone from the South. I loved my time down there. Uh, <laughs> so, where in the South did you live? Uh, well, I went to Louisiana State University, so oh, I lived in. Wow, uh, that's Baton like Rouge. deep South. Yeah, Baton Rouge, that's Louisiana. Like, that's like real far down there. Yep, it was a lot of fun. Hmm. It's interesting. Have you ever point. had Zach's gumbo? Zach, I've never had your gumbo. Oh no. Next time Meg goes out of time, town, Zach. You should make gumbo. Does Meg have to be out of town for you to make it? Does well, she not like your gumbo? She, she's not the biggest fan of it. I did make a batch fairly recently, actually, um, that I think she liked a little more than usual. And she is going out of town in, a, in a, like a week and a half, actually. Right. So All right, gumbo time. I might make some, yeah. The pro and we still have some of this other batch. That is the problem with gumbo is when you make it, you end up then having gumbo for like a month. You, it's very hard to get rid of. Well, that's why you invite people over who like right. gumbo. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Um, so yeah, maybe I maybe I. Do you will. make like red beans and rice? Zach? I have made red beans and rice, but it's been a while. Um, yeah, that's like a, a dish I only had in childhood, and kind of want to have again. But I don't like know where, like where, you know, where in the bay can I go to get red beans and rice? Well, a grocery store. You yeah. Buy, oh wait, I'll tell you the recipe. Is you it buy Uncle some Ben's? red beans and you okay. buy some rice. Okay. And you cook them. That's not it. <laughs> There's more to it than that. <laughs> but there's a lot of spices involved, and not only would I not want to buy a ton of spices to make it one dish once, um, I also wouldn't know the correct proportions in which to use said spices. It mm. is easy. Brett's not wrong, though. It is easy to make, and you can look up a recipe. Yeah, the, um, that's what the internet's for, Bridger. I feel you're good at interneting. I, I, ju I feel like I can pay somebody to make it for me, though. Well, I will this say... This has to be true. I will say, uh, uh, Meg, if you're still in um, chat, what's that... What's the, there's a couple of Louisiana places around that we've gone before. In the uh, Bay? In, down here in the South wow. Bay, yeah. Um, so, okay, cool. Steaks are just about done. Are we glamming up the steaks? Well, you know, I don't think the glam cam is going to get these. I think we're going to have to do shoulder zooms. Mm. Okay, so we can do some shoulder zoom, Let's though. Let's do some shoulder zoom. Yeah, and here we go. We got different steaks. Here's, like, one of the parts where it stayed... Black, so when I go to put this on a on a guy, he's gonna gotta gotta go this way. Here's a nice bloody one, the hook, the incandescence. Okay, and there we go. So stakes are are done. Do and the last thing I will say, well, not the last thing, but one thing I will say about gubbins, uh, as we finish the stakes up here, one thing I will say about gubbins is that when you work on them, uh, and then you apply them to your model, Bridger and I are gonna stick some on the end. Uh, uh, decorate our models at the end of tonight's stream. Um, I will say that you might find that after you put the, the gubbin on the model that there's something like you want to touch up or something. Mm -hmm. um, so th that happens. Um, but th I think those stakes are going to be are going to be perfect. So I'm doing the same hook thing here with the legs with the unidentified animal leg. Just going through I'm like being totally cool if I, act if I actually paint the the rod that they're stuck on, the wire, I don't care. Right, so I'm just like tracing some lead belcher across. Uh, and you want to do that because if you leave the hook like the same color as the meat, it just blends like, right in. Yeah, and, and it's just like it's something people notice, you know? When they get in there and they look. Zach, perchance, do we have a lighter silver, a more aggressive silver? A silver that will really just catch the eye. Uh, Contrast well. Could you use the marker. The marker is a little Ooh, brighter even than. That could do it. Yeah, the marker is a little bit brighter than even the um, the rune fang steel. It, it's pretty close to rune fang steel, but it's a little bit lighter. All right. Uh, thank you, Colin. Hey, Titans. I am mostly a person who commissions armies, but I did paint my Necrons with a very easy to do scheme. What army should I build and paint? Well, um, 
I think, I think if you uh, want a, an army that's easy um, and, and can have kind of like these cool effects that uh, we, we showcase here a lot where it's like here's a technique and if you pl apply this technique it'll cover like mm -hmm. 75, 85% of your model. I think Death Guard are certainly in the running. Oh. Um, we we, we want to do, um, we're, we're going to do some oil washing in the new year on some on some Death Guard terrain. That's, some, that's something we have uh, on, our, on our medium term calendar. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that if you want to uh, try oil wash, they're a good candidate for that. But even non-oil washes, they look uh, they look good. Um, oh, Colin, second part. Okay, what should you do myself next? So cool, we're answering the question. Custodies, as says, I already have them in some variety. Yeah, it says guys. can't do Sisters Necron Space Marines Custodies, as yeah. I ha already have them in some variety. Yeah, so I think Death Guard are like that. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Mm -hmm. um, because if you're Colin, if you're not like loving doing like a lot of like labor of love painting style, then I think that they're a good army for that because you mistakes are forgiven, mm -hmm. and then you can do a lot of a lot of fun techniques. Like I said, go a long way. They they respond well to dry brushing. They respond well to oil washes. Um, I like the way you put that. They respond well to it. Yeah, frankly, they 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 respond well to a lot of techniques. They res they they work with. A it's like a cat with a squirt bottle, you know. Like exactly, they really pay attention when you do it. Yeah, exactly. You know, Zach, I, I had all the same thoughts, but the army that popped into my head was Tyranids. I think. Oh. Yeah. I think you could do contrast paints on yeah. all the sort of skinny things. You could do, you know, then, then you. Paint the chitin a contrasting color. If you're feeling ambitious, you can edge highlight some of the scales. And and, and feathering um, feathering uh, chitin is is uh, time consuming, but it's not hard. Um, but it, it, again, it goes a long way if, if you do like the street the feathering streaking. Um, so it's not a hard technique, but it's a technique you're going to want to like fire up a show, hang out with the fam, and just like sit there and do it for like a weekend, and you're going to like. Be a little bit annoyed, but um, you'll get good results. It'll come out. So, yeah, I think I I, I think that's also a good a good one, Brad. I would say those two. I'd say Tyranids, maybe if you want a Xenos army, and Death Guard if you want a Chaos army. Excellent suggestions. Um, and this marker also an excellent suggestion. Or the pen. What is is it a little bright? Yeah, it's coming out a little brighter, right? I love it. Okay, we got hands are done. We only got two hands, Bridger, so we right. can get and one. And if you hand. want to know where to get that pen, there's a link. In the yeah, and if you now, yeah, thank you, Brad. <laughs> Brad put a link up. Um, that's like our number one requested. And then, uh, yeah, Bridger, the place is called Poor House. It's it's around uh, where we live. You can get Poor the House, yeah. like like pouring a drink. P O O R. A poor house. Yeah. As in, have no money. Exactly. Got it. Poor. It's where you live. It's by where you live. It's, I mean, it's like close enough to both you and. It's between us, perhaps. Pretty much, yeah. All right. And there's a couple. There's a couple. Honestly, I've like, I will say this: if if any uh, if any folks are like, ooh, where can I get authentic Louisiana food? I will say that in in, it's in Louisiana. Uh, that's the bit. That's the best <laughs> place to go. But I will say a couple of things. One, one thing I've noticed is that. Um, lots of places make really good food, and they say it's authentic Louisiana food, and it has a lot of elements of it, and it's good. And I'm not going to be like, oh, you can't get authentic, because you probably can. But one thing I will say is that a lot of places, what they call gumbo, mm -hmm. is actually in Louisiana what's referred to as etouffee, which means smothered. Um, gumbo itself is actually very soupy. So if you go to like a truly authentic place and order gumbo, mm -hmm. and are expecting like that kind of ricey, uh, saucy thing. That is what I'm that, expecting. That's etouffee. I'm really um, looking so, for like a curry. Essentially. Exactly, yeah, it's pretty similar. And that's kind of like what red beans and rice is too. Hmm. Um, and, and then jambalaya should be fairly dry. So all, all three of these things are like the same. They're just varying levels of moisture. And they have different, they have different ingredients, but pretty similar. I am just now coming to terms, Zach, with how uh, many gubbins I didn't paint. Oh. We do have an hour. Well, that's okay, though, because what you can do is you don't, remember, like we discussed, you don't have to do the raised stuff on everything. Yes, no. Now I'm going to do, I'm switching to leather mode. Okay, I'm going to cool. do the leather on the knives, so we at least have a bunch of knives. We're using Mornfang Brown, yeah? Um, for leather, I like, actually, no. You know what I like is XV88. Oh. I like me some Tau model. Um, oh, you know what? You could do, you could do Mornfang Brown. No, I, I would jump right, I would do XV88. All right. Yeah. 
Yeah, because broad, broadsides have so much leather on them. I know. So. Actually, they're cows. <laughs> that, was a, that was a joke that had many levels. Yeah, but the, you, the, you know, I, I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna object to that because at least it wasn't about fish. It wasn't about fish. Like actually, bovines. It was about foods. cows. You guys want to check out some meat on hooks? Ready? Do Let's a take a zoom. look. Okay, we got. Let me grab my pointer, which is an old airbrush needle. <laughs> okay. okay, we got tongues. We, we got, got tongues. we got ribs. We got ribs. Okay. We got mysterious animal leg. Mm -hmm. We got our our chicken. Okay, all a little glossy from the blood. We got we showed off our steaks already. Okay, mm -hmm. and then we've got our two gruesome hands, which it might be my favorite, honestly. The hands are pretty cool. I sort of wish we had done more hands. Okay, and that what, means Do you know what kit the hand is from? Nope. <laughs> well, yours did we my... did we check the small gargant kit? Yeah. Because that kit has a we lot. We checked everything, yeah. Kit he, has a lot all of this stuff just loves eating. Gruesome things. Well, we have another super chat. Thank you, Willow. Hey, Titans. Painting along with some griff hounds tonight to stay with the meat theme. If you had to make a meal out of chaos demon, demon, uh, if you had to make a meal out of a chaos demon, and why? <laughs> I think I'd go Zine. Oh, the which change. out of which, which chaos demon? Demons? Okay, okay. The change is inevitable. So they go with Zinge. All right. Um, hmm. There's a joke there. Very funny, Willow. Um, well, Nurgle. I tell you, I would not. You, I was just the flesh say is would, abundant. I would definitely say I would not eat Nurgle. I think I would get sick no matter what happens. Uh, it's Taco Bell. The flesh is abundant. I, I think the right answer here is because of decadence is probably sl Slanesh. Um, and and I, I, I'm going to guess that's the right answer. But Willow, I don't know if there is a right blood answer. Blood for the blood god, corn. Oh, yeah, that's true. You could have, like, blood pudding or something. Yeah, that's true. Um, I don't know. These are these are all good options. Um, I'm trying to think which chaos demon looks the most delicious. Of course, the problem is that they don't. You can't eat them, right? They they like turn into vapor when they die. Right. See, I was thinking, what is it? Zinch that they're all they're all they're all birds. They are mostly birds. Lots of birds. Yeah. yeah. So that it tastes like chicken. I'm sure, right? Yeah. Um, like a like a bring like but, a lord of change like a big old lord of change. Yeah. But Slanesh has a bunch of crab claws. Ooh, crab claw! Cra I love crab. So mm. that's true. We I, get I some like shellfish Jay. in there. Yeah. And Nurgle, all about the bugs. So, so you that's want another reason not to pick Nurgle. <laughs> so I would I, I would eat, I, I I low key want to eat bugs. I, I'd be into eating bugs. Okay. Yeah, but not over like chicken or seafood, right? Well, I've had chicken and seafood. Well, you can also have bugs. Yeah. That's what he's saying. Is he, <laughs> wants to, he wants to try it. Try it, yeah. But you don't need to eat a chaos demon to eat bugs is what I'm saying. Oh, I see. Yeah. No, you right, know it's what? It's like diving Before into I, the deep end of the pool. It's true. Before I eat a chaos demon that looks like a bug, I'd rather have tried bugs first. Right. You're not like committing to eating an entire bug bigger than you. If I was being, if I, if I, yeah, if I had, if I had to make the call, I would say, hey guys, I'm not going to do that because I haven't had a, I haven't had that yet. I don't know if right. I'm allergic or what the deal is. Um, cool. Well, we can stop talking about food now, or we keep talking about food, but I'm done the food portion. You want to do birds next? Let's do birds. Um, I'm excited about birds. Or bird. bone. We have a lot of bones. We do it's have called. a lot of bone. Bone's super easy. Let's do birds. Wait, birds what? are going to be... You said do shopty bone is easy? No, but... Uh, yes, it's just exhausting. No, it's... It's neither. <laughs> it's fine. Um... <laughs> It, the the way that we're referencing, of course, the, the infamous Brian painting rope scenario, but that was an unfortunate way of painting Ushanti Bone that he it's, had to do. It's because we were trying to do gubs on Not Gubs Day. Well, exactly. We were trying to do... Ushanti Bone is just a very... Uh, it's just a, It doesn't cover very well. It covers reason. great on an airbrush. It does not cover well when painted with a paintbrush. That's correct. Um, unless you build it up, which you really have to do. You really got to build it up. You got to, you got to go from like XV88. You raise me up. Yeah, exactly. Weird. Anyway, here we go. How are we going to paint our birds? Okay. Well, first, um, Crip Shadow, we did kind of paint the fat. Uh, you, you might have missed it. Um, we can show it again here. It's still Let's a little red. 
Uh, we want to show Crypt Shadow. He's a big fan of the show. So, and we also did a little bit of uh, Mother of Pearl Incandescence on there, Turbo Dork. Uh, it's called Mother Load. So you can see kind of the the, the fat there, um, the the ring on the on the ribeye, which is probably my favorite, probably my favorite cut of steak. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I'll think, tell you what, Zach. I think I like ribeye. I went. While I, we were in Vegas, I think I, I can guess eye. yours. I can guess yours, but keep going. And it was, I was disappointed. It yeah. was um, it was raw meat. Well, yeah, I, mean, I guess you have to cook it. Any any yeah. cut of meat's going to be gross if it's not the, prepared the way you like it. The restaurant we went to did not cook it, and um, they didn't cook it to your. I had an unpleasant either. evening. Yeah, so they probably nighttime and morning. Oh no! <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> was um, it beef or something else? It was beef. They just didn't, they literally just didn't cook it. It was raw meat. Was that the restaurant's shtick? I know in Vegas you can go to restaurants that do all kinds of weird things. I, if it was their shtick, it was not super well advertised. There was an asterisk on the menu next to basically everything that said, we're just going to make this medium rare, and we're warning you now that eating undercooked beef can cause problems. And I was like, hmm. Well, that's not medium rare. That's just raw. <laughs> Yeah, because medium rare is sort of the is sort of the default, right? Right. If you don't specify. But medium rare does indicate touching a grill at some point. That's uh, true. That's fair. Okay, so we've got some birds. We've got three types of birds. No idea where all these different birds came from, but I love it. Um, there's tiny birds. There's large ravens. And Bird. then there's small vultures. Birds for scale. The vultures and the ravens here are about the same size, and that does happen. Uh, ravens are huge, actually. So we're going to paint things a few different ways. We're going to leave the ravens this black, and all we're going to do with the ravens is we're going to do a dry brush on them. Um, I'm thinking that I, at first I was thinking Mechanica Standard Gray, um, but I'm actually not going to use Mechanica Standard Gray. I'm going to check the wall behind me for like a almost like that, like a very dark blue. Okay, because that's the color ravens are. Um, they, they actually have like a bluish, bluishness to them, bluish black. Uh, okay, these guys I'm going to dry brush with Mechanica Standard Gray. Or sorry, first I'm going to airbrush them with Corvus Black um, to bring their their gray, their black up a little bit. Then we're going to dry brush them with Mechanica Standard Gray, and then we're going to give them a little bald and bloodied head to make it look like they've just had their heads in some kind of disgusting animal eating it. Um, because that's what vultures do. We love them. Nature's janitors. <laughs> Next, we have these little birds, and I'm going to try to do something something cute, and I'm going to try to make magpies. And what that means is, I'm going to uh, airbrush their heads white. Oh, good luck with that. I love magpies. They're one of my favorite birds. They're so cool. So um, I love driving across the western U.S. and seeing them just hanging out on fences and stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna try to make some magpies here, and they're they're uh, nasty birds that like eating uh, carrion and stuff. And I love just I love uh, like I'm very excited to glue some of these birds to my uh, stone horns and just have like birds like they, like they just follow these guys in the combat because they're like hey these guys are gonna murder a bunch of things right, and yeah, we're gonna yeah. eat those murdered things. Have uh, you seen that Portlandia episode? Where they put birds on things? Yes. Oh yeah, put a bird on that things. That was great. So we're putting birds on things. <laughs> guys are making art. Yeah, we're making art. <laughs> I'm very excited to make some art here. Make Bridger, some hippie art. Uh, how are you doing? Uh, I'm I'm doing all right. Okay. I'm just I'm leathering up the handles of knives. And then I think I'm gonna have to hit the handle with seraphim sepia, and uh, the rest of the knife we're gonna hit with non oil. Oh my God, Reaper has so many blacks. Well, you know, there's five blacks here from Reaper. All right. Yeah. I, oh my God. They gosh. all look the same. Can we get a top down? <laughs> let's let's take a look. Uh, you tell us. Oh well, you tell us. Can you tell the difference? I mean, yeah, I guess one I of can. those is different. This one. That one's very different. But That's the rest. and the man and black. This is nightmare black. Okay. It looks like it might have a little bit of blue or purple or something in it. Um, I thought dragon black was like their true black. No. We've used that before as a true black, but then here's solid black. Solid black, definitely um, their true black. And then black. here's noir black. So this is very cool. You'd think like that'd be fun to play with on the birds, but it's not really gonna, it's just not gonna really come out. Here's also- It's oh, all just shades of gray, Zach. Yeah, and then there's also nightshade purple. So what I'm looking for here, real, real quick folks, is just like a super dark blue that I know we've got. Um, I think this might cut it. Ultramarine shadow, what do you think they want you to use that for? 
Hmm, maybe doing the shadows on your old brains. I think so. Okay, cool, cool. Um, so we're gonna start off with these ravens. We're gonna well, just how'd do... they get away with that one? That's Isn't a there? that's a real color, ultramarine. <laughs> you didn't know that? That's like an actual color. It's this Why color. Why did GW use a word they couldn't copyright? I, that was a bit silly. They were, of them. Yeah, they're being it a little before. It was before they they realized that that was important. Mm. Yeah, mm. but they just haven't gotten around to fixing cha that. Changing the name that's of ultramarine. Tough one to fix. That would be a big one to change. Yeah. And the ravens are actually pretty easy because all all I'm going to do is um, just kind of do do like a little bit of a sloppy over dry brush on this on them with this ultramarine blue, and you can see all it's doing is just kind of giving. You can probably barely even tell the difference, but here's one that's had it, and here's one that has not had it. You can see the difference. Not a lot going on there. So uh, just giving them a little bit of the dry brush. Now, one thing that's very cool is what ravens do in the wild is they will follow something around in our world, like a wolverine mm -hmm. um, in the Arctic. And because they, uh, you know, when, when carrion freezes solid, they can't, they can't eat it. Mm -hmm. So they'll follow some kind of animal around. But then what they do is they allure the animal to the, the carcass. Mm -hmm. And so I like to imagine that's what my guys are going to do. They're going to... They're going to be like, hey, Beast Claw Raiders, we found some things for you to eat so that we can eat the Come defrost it for yeah, us. Come yeah, <laughs> come rip open this stuff so we can eat it. That's yeah. pretty cool. I didn't, I didn't know that about Arctic ravens. Yeah. Seems like a pretty awful climate to be a scavenger. Yeah. There's lots of things dying. That's true also. Maybe it's a great climate to be a scavenger. Maybe, yeah. Seems kind of like an awful climate to do anything in. <laughs> we live in coastal right? California, so like that's just, you know, yeah. what we do. I thought you were gonna say that you imagine your ravens flying around, knock, knock, knocking on people's on your ogre's chamber doors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Such a Brett joke. I thought you were gonna say on heaven's door. Oh, that. But. Different reference. I mean, <laughs> different reference. <laughs> you, could be, could be that too. Um, Zach, Megan wants to know what your take is on an open face sandwich. Is it actually a sandwich? I mean, it is what it is, right? An open face sandwich is an open face sandwich. Yeah. Um, you artfully dodged the question there. Is it a sandwich? It's an open face sandwich. Again, didn't answer the question. <laughs> really gonna have to. Pin you down on this one, Zach. Open face sandwich. Is it? What are the other options? A sandwich. Yes or no? Uh, we're classifying. No, I guess not. It's in the same. It's like it's like you would you would classify. Is it a pizza? Quite, quite. Yeah. It's, yeah. Well, <laughs> is, is that, it a is pizza? That the question? <laughs> you would you would classify it along the, a long way, and then you would be like, oh, okay, it's it's not it's not it doesn't get the final classification. Mm hmm. You, so, you're saying no? Kind of like how, like a, like a... I'm getting a no. Kind of like how, you know, uh, there's a difference between like a, a black Phoebe and an Eastern Phoebe. These are birds, right? They're, they're, they're both Phoebes, but they're two different types of Phoebes. You've been playing too much Wingspan, Zach. <laughs> I have been playing a lot of Wingspan. Actually, not too recently. You've definitely been playing too much Wingspan. You just named two birds I've never heard of. Well, In I, casual conversation. Yeah. As a relatable example. It is relatable. <laughs> no, it is not. Nobody <laughs> knows what those birds are. Okay, uh, so we're gonna need to do vulture heads, but even before we get there, we're gonna do. We're gonna try to be really cute, and the vultures don't have a lot going on with them. It's really nice, actually. The birds are fairly easy to paint. If you think about like feathers, respond really well to dry brushing, and birds are all feathers mostly. <laughs> so pretty much, we're just doing these uh, these little dry brush uh, steps on the birds. Okay, let, I'm gonna take. Um, take anything you want. I'm gonna take this guy right here. This is Deathclaw Brown, definitively not a brown. Uh, and I'm gonna just hit a little bit of, of the vulture's head here with a little overbrushing. Not, not too much going on here. Uh, and it, it, it's gonna look a little goofy at first. This color is kind of funky, but when it dries, it's gonna look great. And then, plus, not to mention, we're gonna cover it with blood. Man, normal oils are great. 
Great material. <laughs> Great just, equalizer. <laughs> it just makes everything look good. Yes. Even the things that I was looking at it and I was like, mm, I don't know, I don't really like it. No, it just cleans right up. Before I strip this and repaint it, let me just try some normal oil. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and dry brushing too, right? Like these, these are, again, like, I don't know, techniques that just like go a long way. Hmm. It's so fast though. I have, to, I have to go back to doing fiddly bits before I finish with the normal oil. Yeah, well, you'll have to clean the airbrush too, though. <laughs> so you'll dump that, you'll go ahead and dump that uh, non oil back in the pot, and then you'll clean that, run a lot of water through that airbrush. So there is that that you have to do. <laughs> Did you take the non oil? No. Oh, there it is. There it is. And I, I bring that strong up. strong opinions about clean airbrushes, people. <laughs> yeah, like. In case you couldn't tell. It's pretty, it's pretty easy, it's pretty simple. Clean your airbrush. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> Everybody comes on the stream and is like, oh yeah, I clean my airbrush. Oh, I don't purport. You did not. To, to do that. That's Actually, I'm pretty upfront about how much I don't clean my airbrush. Uh, thank you, Crip Shadow. I heard bird is the word. Also, it's a diet sandwich, like Bridger's Diet Coke. Oh, yeah, I don't know, because diet, it's it's... You know, Diet Coke is still, it doesn't have sugar, right? So it's different ingredients, I it has guess. has no calories. Yeah. It's not less Coke, right? If you had half a can of Coke and you called that a Diet Coke, you would be wrong. Whereas, so, like, if you take a sandwich, you take half the sandwich off. It's not suddenly a diet sandwich. <laughs> right? Yeah, I guess not. I guess you're right. It's just half a sandwich now. It's not a diet sandwich. <laughs> it's not a diet sandwich. <laughs> All right, let's try to make some magpies. No idea if this is going to work. Oh, I want to get a close-up on that. But uh, it's, it'll be fun to watch me fail on stream. So magpies have a white head. Okay. Um, That's their, like, their distinctive feature? Yeah, they have, like, a... Uh, they're, they're pretty much a family, a type of crow. But they have, like, a kind of, like, a dark blue ring and then, like, a white head. A dark blue kind of ring around their neck. So these are tiny little birds. Probably the worst one to pick to be the magpie, but that's okay. Magpies are, would be smaller than ravens and would be smaller than vultures. And for some reason, I'm like, I've gone full. This needs to be actual earth cannon on my AOS army here for some reason. So I'm hitting them with a little bit of this blue to kind of go about halfway down their body. Okay, and that blue is pretty dark, so I don't know how well that shows up on camera. We always talk about how the TV that we view here uh, has kind of some weird color issues. So I don't know how if you guys can see, but Brett, can you see the little blue heads on the magpie? Yes. Like, not really. Okay, there we go. So we're starting with the blue. Okay, then what we're going to do is clean our airbrush. Yeah. Real quick, get that blue out of there. And we especially want to do that here because we're going to do a light gray next. Because we're building up to white. So we're going to do a light gray next. And then we're going to end with, we're going to end with white. Very cool. So we do a quick airbrush. Man, you're so fast to clean your airbrush. Yeah, I know. It's weird. And it stays clean. It's so odd. It's like you could just do, you could just see what I'm doing. It's like you could just watch. Anyone could just watch what I'm doing and do it. It's weird. <laughs> uh, thank you, Dukes of Dice. Other than Wingspan, what other board games do you like playing? I think a lot of you would dig uh, Kemet or Kemet, Kemet, Kemet? Uh, okay. uh, and other area control games. I love board games. We do board game Just nights. In general, yeah, we've done some board game nights. Um, Dominions, like deck builders, are a personal favorite. We're big into Dominion. We got we got John so into Dominion. We that he bought, he went out and bought Dominion. He bought Dominion? He bought Dominion. In, no In like way. one weekend, we got John into AOS that was, and Dominion. That guy is impressionable. John, I'm we, sorry. We should see what else that we can was, get that guy into. Well, I've, he is pretty impressionable. He's very Pretty much every time I tell him about something, he gets pretty into it. I'm like, hey, John, check out this webcomic. And he's like, yes, let me spend the next 20 hours of my life on that webcomic. Or, oh, John, I don't, did you watch Squid Game? John might not have watched Squid Game. That might be one where I failed. Or like, John, have you heard about buying your friend an Alfa Romero? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's right. like the new thing. Yeah, John, the oh, new cool thing. Uh, you should come try it. Buy your friend an Alfa Romero. 
don't even know what it's that a is. car. It's an Italian sports car. Can you um, do a top down, mm. please? I'm gonna. Here we go. Okay. So now what we're doing uh, is we're gonna do a little bit of administratum gray right on the birds' heads, and so we want to be really careful because any overspray is gonna be noticeable. So here's my approach. I'm gonna spray the area. I'm gonna move the bird into it. Hmm. You're perfectly blocking what you're doing with your hand. It's impressive, actually. <laughs> I will say this. <laughs> I need to be really on, like careful here. So I'm uh, making sure I'm getting the bird's head right, as opposed to giving the best view. It, se it seems like what you're doing is very difficult and perhaps technically impressive. No, but I mean... All I can do is I, giggle. I just have to be careful, which is why I know I'm probably, my hand is probably covering the view. It's okay, Zach. It's gonna look beautiful when you're done. Just like these shields. This bronze is just a gray color. I wanna make everything this bronze. Dukes of Dice, I, uh, on the topic of board games, I really enjoy co-op board games. Uh, like Pandemic? Yes, like Pandemic. Do you like legacy board games? Uh, what do you, what, you mean? Like, like Pandemic ones? Legacy? Ones where the game changes every time you play it? Uh, doesn't have to be, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I think a lot of co-op games tend to be have some sort of procedurally generated element, so you're playing against, against what makes, a, random, a random instance of the game. What makes Legacy games so special is that your playthrough impacts the rules of future games. So, like, oh, I see. a bad thing happens in a place. And yeah. for every future game, that place has a bad thing now. I see. Or like you built a base in a place, and right. now there's just a base there forever. No, um, I mean, most of the co-op games, I have played Pandemic, and I do enjoy it, but most of the co-op games I've played are like tabletop games, like some sort of miniatures game. Right, yeah. Um, so, uh, I just played this past weekend Shadows of Brimstone. Ooh. You ever heard of that? I have not. Uh, it basically takes place, it's a, it's a dungeon crawler, co-op dungeon crawler Ooh, that, uh, really that takes place in this like alternate wild west. Uh, and then like you go through portals and you fight like zombies and monsters. I am super into all the things you're saying. Come back with like laser guns. Yes. <laughs> all right, sign me up. When uh, are we, Zach, when are we playing this? It sounds great. When's, can we have a game there's, night? There's miniatures and there's a procedurally generated board. It's basically like Wild West Diablo. Yes. Yeah, the board game. I have a serious question in chat. Did anyone correct me that um, magpies are white with blackheads? Because that's what they are. No, nobody did I, that. I, these are reverse magpies. Did you Google it? <laughs> reverse magpies. <laughs> but that's also Wait, okay. I think. Come to you. <laughs> what? I think that's going to look cool too. Cobra Sentinels we gotta is also game. amazing. Yes, we gotta play that's that a, game. That's a great game as well. That sounds really cool. It, you know what it reminds me of? Heroescape. I don't know what that is. It was a miniatures game. It was like PvP. It wasn't co-op. But you had a board of these little hex tiles, but it was vertical. You like built... There, there was like a one piece that was just a hex tile, and there was like a three piece that was three hex tiles together. Yep. And there was like an eight piece and a 12 piece and a 20 piece, and they were in all these weird shapes, and you stacked them, and they were different colors representing different terrain types. And so you could just build a board. There would be like grass and mountain and, you know, water, and you could just build a board out of these weird hex tiles. And there were teams of like operatives from different fantasy realms. So there yeah. was like... Well, a squad of World War II soldiers that had like a grenade launcher and a flamethrower oh, cool, and machine yeah. guns. And there was like a ninja squad. Super anachronistic, yeah. Right. And it was like this dope, just combination whatever of you want to play. Yeah, whatever you like, just play it yeah. on this hex grid, build your own board. Everything had points values, so you could like combine. You're like, this samurai and that, like, you know, knight riding a horse and that dragon are a team. Yep. Against. You know, a World War II and a veteran squad and robots and also cavemen. And you're like, yep, this is our game now. <laughs> We're going to play this. Who would win? I like it. Um, Dukes of Dice? or dice? Di Dukes of Dice. That's, Dukes of yeah, Dice, yeah. That's correct. Um, I am really into this game that you have to order, I think, from their website called Soul, S-O-L. We've played this. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, it's the one where you're Sol rotating around the sun. Sol. We played it. I have not played this. We played it. You I? wanted me to play it, and we didn't play Oh, bummer. Um, we'll have to play that one next time. No, I, I, You've I played, played, it. played it. Yeah. 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 Um, it's, it's, it's cool. It's got a little, little co-op element to it. Like, you kind of competitive. Co like, like not, racing, but like you're racing towards the same objective almost. Yeah, and you kind of use each other's stuff. Yeah. Um, it's super cool. I also, I'm trying to think of some of my other favorite games. I do love Dominion. Um, Dominion's a great game. And I do love uh, Dice Forge. Yeah, Dice Forge is cool. Oh, Dice that. Forge. I've actually always wanted to play Dice Forge. Um, I, I really like Race for the Galaxy. Um, and Roll for Galaxy is okay too, but I like, I like both. Um, the first co-op board game I ever played was the Doom board game. Oh, uh, it was, it was Dune or Doom? Doom. Doom, Dune yeah. is one of the worst board games ever made. Oh, Dune is a super popular board game. People it's love that game. Who you play? I I've seen people horrific. Play it. Played it. You played it? I've never played it. It's no, I played it, and it's it took a team of seven people twelve hours to play that game, <laughs> and it's asymmetric, like in the most aggressive, they didn't plan it out way, where like just the the bonuses you get are nonsense. Like, there's a faction that just always wins battle. There's a faction that literally determines the rules of trade. Like, doing the board game was not thought through. It was oh, like I, a... I think, they, I think you're going to find that might be a hot take. I, I know a lot of people love that game. It, it was like they just didn't finish playtesting the, the game. Right, they just didn't finish the game. It was like... They, mo they made most of a game, never QA'd anything, never finished playtesting, and just released it. Okay, we're getting a little information. Willow here says that there's multiple versions of Dune, so we might be talking about different ones. Though I, I know that there's one that a lot of people love and that people have a hard time getting. Um, the uh, old, old, a, old, a mutual, old one? A uh, friend of ours, Michael Dunsmore, I know, has it, I, and I've seen him and some people play it before. Um, yeah, I think it's very old, and I know people love yeah. one version, at least one version of Dune people love. I just, it was so opaque. I just couldn't get into it. Like, it took so long to do anything, and nobody ever knew what they were doing. Maybe you j it's just one of those games where you have to get really good at it or something. I don't know. But whenever somebody says you have to play for 30 hours before it gets good, I just yeah, that's, tune that's, out. I'm yeah. like, okay, cool. You enjoy that. Maybe that's Warhammer, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, right? Wah, so, okay, wah. let's look at my... Can we look at my... Bizarre, bizarro magpies. So here we go. Uh, nobody, because none of you guys decided to correct me uh, on what a, I mean, guys, there were people correcting how I pronounced Alfa Romero. There were people <laughs> uh, talking about all the different board games we played. Nobody said anything about the fact that I was painting magpies backwards. You know why, Zach? Because they nobody haven't played knows. Wingspan religiously and they don't know. But magpies are like a famous bird. People should just know. You guys should it's just It's not know. like Blue Jay. Like if you'd drawn a or if you'd painted a blue jay with like a blue beak and a red body, we'd be like, Well, Zach, blue jays don't have any of those. I mean, they, they're blue. I mean, also, we're we talking about eastern blue jay, scrub jay, <laughs> western scrub jay, stellar's jay. What are we talking about here? You've got to chill out on wings. <laughs> no, I also just love birds. Meg can tell you, I just like, I like learning about birds. Okay. Uh, so, anyway, my, my bizarre magpies actually gave me a cool opportunity, though. Since their heads were white and not black, we're going to go ahead and put a little. Uh, shiny blood all over their beaks. Oh, I love that. Because now, like, since their heads are white, um, you know, that can stain red. So this bird is, uh, the birds are done. So recap our birds. We've got the ravens. They're pretty basic. OK, a little bit of blue there you can see. Maybe, maybe you can see. Uh, we've got the vultures with their little bloody heads. These are kind of small vultures. Um, maybe like baby blood vultures, which my army has. Mm -hmm. And then here are the uh, <laughs> reverse magpies. I think they look great. The blood beaks, we're going to call them. Little blood, beak, little blood beak birds. So Dukes of Dice mentioned that there was a Heroescape magic hybrid that came out a few years ago. Okay. It came out more than a few years ago because I lived with my parents in... Like, we've moved houses. I remember the house we had it in, and I played it. I mean, nobody played it with me. I bought it, and I played it with myself. I did this a lot with games. Oh, no. Um, but I did... Well, no, it's, I enjoyed the games. Okay. Uh, it was a cool game. I was into it. Uh, the models sucked, though. It was oh, like, you know when toy companies make, like, semi-translucent plastic that has color in it 
in the injection process and they just leave it there. They don't actually bother to paint the plastic. It's just there is some color in the uh, translucent plastic. Okay, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that I, was every model. They oh, like just didn't. They were like, you don't have to paint it because it's just it has color and it lo everything looked awful. That's funny. Um, okay, one thing I will say, guys, about about gubbins. I'm about to knock out these barrels real quick. Um, I will say this. In my opinion, with gubbins, you do want to limit the color on a gubbin. Um, and they do respond well to like to washes and to dry brushes and stuff like that. But I, you know, I'd be careful with like adding vivid colors unless that's like what you're doing, right? Like if, if, if you, the color, like your army is kind of a drab color or like metallic or something, silver or blacks. And then there's like a gubbin that's showing up all over your army like a bit. And that's where the color comes from. Then that's one, then that's one thing. I feel like gray knights, I was looking at some gray knights last night or a little bit like that actually. Um, like painting their power swords cool is like a good move because otherwise the army is just right. Otherwise they're very kind of boring. silver, yeah. yeah. Or uh, purity seals or something. Exactly. Right. The big books that they carry around. Yeah, exactly. So um, I, I, I would definitely say that. Otherwise, like I, I don't like adding like going in and adding like a lot of some blues and yellows and reds to gubbins. Uh, it's not usually something that like I want eyes to go to and like we've talked about that before in the stream like. When somebody walks up to the table and looks at your your army, and looks at maybe one of your cooler like centerpiece bigger models, where do you want their eyes to go? Um, straight to the girls. You don't want them to go straight. It's to the all gums. about the girls. It, it, it'd actually be an odd look, I think. Hanging out in Gub Town. Anyway, I'm excited for these birds. Even though I did the magpies reverse, I could have fixed that, and I chose not to. You chose right? not to, but Cobra. Did say that some magpies are the way you described. Oh, I see. That's awesome. And I know that there's different types of magpies. I, I was kind of imagining the North American one we oh. have here in, in Western U.S. Zach, we all know that you know everything about birds. No, I, 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 I don't. I got that. <laughs> Reverse that completely. Although I'm pretty happy with the way they came out. They look, they look fun, funny, cute, cute in a funny way. Okay, cool. So here's what I'm going to do now. Um, I put a super thick coat of dryad bark on some barrels. We've got four big barrels and three little barrels. We have like a million other barrels that we didn't even bother with today. Um, while that's happening, uh, oh, so that coat's very thick and it's, it's just needs to dry a second. While that- and Take uh, a look at it. Well, well that, what's that? I think I'm almost entirely done. Oh, really? Awesome. I'm gonna take a look at some of my work here. Well, let's, yeah, let's, let's put it on the cam. You here. also need to do uh, Fan stuff. Oh, we haven't done fan we stuff. We do need to do fan, fan stuff. stuff. Yeah. Before we look at Bridger stuff. Let's yeah. Let's look, look at fan stuff. Let's look at fan stuff. Um, wow. Some cool stuff this week. Uh, this is Alpha Legion guy. He's got a few pictures. Uh, only a couple people put their names on things today, um, so I don't remember names. Uh, super cool terrain. Again, there's a few pictures of this guy's stuff. He's made like these stacked cargo crates, which I'm really into. Uh, oh, this is very cool. Ooh. Uh, Peeps should check this out in the Discord. And again, I don't remember this guy's name, but he these are all tests of different orc skin. So we'll circle back to this one. But with that orc skin, if you're like, hey, I want to see what different orc skin looks like, there's a guy that did that, right? And so he's got he's got them all and he listed them all. Super cool. And they all looked great, oh, by the he, way. Did he uh, type out the recipes for it? I think he did. Yeah. And then in addition That's to that, cool. not only that, I think he said he was using all of them for his army because he wanted the orcs oh, wow. to have like... A little bit of variety in their skin colors, That's really cool. um, which is cool. Bridger, I included some custo custodies yeah. here for you. I like the purple hair. Yeah, this is gold and purple, and the the purple cl cloth as well. Yeah. Oh, Thousand Suns Volkite Contemptor, Ooh. and the Thousand Suns Contemptor is so good. It's so it looks good. So it's good. the best Contemptor. Otherwise, I don't love the Contemptors. I know you have that opinion, and it's okay. You can be wrong, Zach. They do look cool with the vol double Volkites. I. But I have a newfound resentment after this past weekend for Volkites. Yeah, I bet you do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, you had the deal. I some. really uh, don't like Volkite. Uh, here's that orc test skin again. Super cool. Yeah, now after this, I'm, I'm with John on this one. After this is the sisters. Cool. This is my favorite sisters color scheme I've ever seen. People do a lot of blacks and stuff on these. I love this look for sisters. Super cool. They look a little like 70s sci fi ish. Here's Indrasta. I wanted to include her. This guy actually had her in the hobby uh, critique section. Uh, I don't remember the, the user's name, but um, she looks amazing. The only thing I would say is, I, I, 
I don't know if he'd finish the base yet. Uh, there needs to be like some color on the base because it's a snow base and Yandrasa's got a lot of like white and silver mm -hmm. and then the wings are white, mm -hmm. it's like light silver and then the snow, the board is all base. So what would you add to close I would, it out? I would honestly even just add like if the snow base, like you need like just some like tufts of like wheat colored grass even, oh. even just something like that. It's not, again, it's not actually, that model is so big, she's so big and on such an interesting base that um, your eyes are gonna go to her, but then like it looks like a white, just like a white wash down like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for the rest of the model. Yeah. Uh, you guys will see when it comes back around. Uh, and then we were talking, I was, I was, I was also including Yandrasta because I was telling Bridger um, that in my, in my recent AOS All right, Zach. scheming, I, uh, I've been punking her. Routinely. Yeah, Zach, Zach thinks that Yandrasta is bad. Yeah. And he just doesn't realize his army is designed to kill her. See this? It looks great. It's, it looks it's awesome. a beautiful paint job. Just like a little bit of color down on that base in the in the foreground. And I don't think he's finished painting it. Okay, here are some custodies from here where I we like are. Orange power custodies. Yeah, from here where we are, we can't see the color, but he, I, it's really one of the first times I've seen custodies in something other than gold. Mm -hmm. And I really liked it. I, it made me wonder what else is out there. I, I don't know. I'd like to see custodies in some other colors, frankly. It'd be kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, ceramic white and matte black are two very common non-gold custody schemes, but you don't tend to see much outside of those three. Okay, I see what you're saying. I thought, I thought with matte black you were making a joke like people who prime their custodies and then don't no, finish painting No, uh, Shadow them. Keepers are matte black. Oh, I see. Um, and Solar Watch is white? I'm probably wrong on that one. One, of them, one of them is like ceramic white. Um, but uh, anyway... Very yeah. cool. Lot, lots of cool stuff. Lots and, of cool fan stuff. Uh, thank you, Magnus. Can't watch live, but we'll check later. What do you guys like to use for sculpting green stuff? Specifically corrugated cables. Need to find a rolly thing, and Green Stuff World doesn't have one that I can find. How would you do this thing? How would you make corrugated cables out of green stuff? Or Brett? I have, I have uh, maybe a hot take. Uh, don't use green stuff. I uh, Get some guitar string. Oh. This is what I like as well. That's really smart. Yeah, get guitar uh, You can get, what he's talking about is they sell these rollers yeah. with uh, texture on them mm -hmm. and you can sort of roll out a snake of green stuff and then like you just roll the snake of green stuff over this flat mm -hmm. thing with a texture on it and it adds the grooves. Let's say, let's say he is, bang, this is putting them somewhere where, you know, guitar string won't really wrap around right. things very well. So let's say he needs that. Uh, yeah, so you can... There are other places that sell them. I don't can't off the top of my head think of them. You can also 3D print them if you have a 3D printer. Mm -hmm. That's a it's another really common uh, and good use for a 3D printer is you can 3D print textures on plates that is it, you can use for rollers uh, or for base impressions. People will do like cobblestones and then you just mm -hmm. like yeah. put green stuff from a millipod on your base, 3D print a little like negative of it and then press it down into your base. To yeah. Make. Some sacks. These can be. Uh, what we're gonna do with the sacks is we're gonna dry brush them, or no, we're gonna, when they dry, mm -hmm. uh, sepia. Got it. Then we're gonna dry brush them XV88 again. Okay. And then we're gonna put bloodiness all over the bottom of them. Like Ooh. whatever whatever they are. Like it's a bag it's full like of goodies. A bag full of goodies. Uh, let's, let's get some feedback here. Are these, uh, I mean, these are ready for a dry brush. Uh, I did some dry brushing on some of them. Well, yeah. You tell me what you're thinking here. I think I'm turning in my homework. Yeah, these look pretty good. I think more aggressive dry brush on um, these ones. I've, I'm looking at anywhere. More aggressive dry brush. Yeah. So with Runefang steel. Yes, I was hitting them with that Runefang. Not all of them. Okay. Some of them. Yeah. The, uh, this one has been hit with it, mm -hmm. and it looks particularly good. But I would hit mm -hmm. them all. I would go over all. You do, you ended up with nothing that is especially copper. At, That's at, correct. Yeah. So so then these at, have some some. But coppery. I think I think even Runefang steel is going to look good on all of this. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I'm gonna go around and that's my homework. In fact, steal it up to you. But also, sepia those sacks for me when you get a chance. You got it, Zach. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Magnus, I'm thinking on on what what you're asking here as well. Um, green stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, do you know of any other brands other than Green Stuff World that sells those rollers? I don't really. 
I don't know of any other brands. I've uh, never used one before myself. I have, and they are, you gotta be real careful with them. Um, getting the roller Ooh. to cleanly separate, yep, that's me, uh, from the green stuff or the mill putt is the largest concern. That's the trick, yeah. We use some kind of talc powder or something? Yeah, I use baby powder, um, and then that kind of did the trick. Until I used baby powder, it was like a nightmare. Um, I tried everything else, like wetting it, drying it. Yep. You know, you you like mold or you you mush it around. You kind of roll it for a long time. I like it. I like using a magic sculpt. I don't have these problems with magic sculpt. Well, that's. Don't you like actually fire magic sculpt? No. What's the what's the one that you actually fire? The magic some, putty? Some kind of clay. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I haven't used one that you do that for, but I don't have the stickiness problem on magic sculpt. However, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm also trying to actually think about Magnus's question here. I have to think on this one, Magnus. Um, if you're in chat tomorrow or some other time, let me know. Remind me, at me. Um, I, I, I need to think on that because I, I think I'm sure there's a way you could do it. I'm almost tempted to. I think like what Brett's saying is right. You just have to find something that has that texture and roll it across. I, I mean, in some ways, a guitar string. <laughs> rolled across might work. Well, you could just use a guitar string. No, I know, but le like th that is the best idea, and that was Brett's original idea, but um, if he needs to be able to like, wrap it around something, a guitar string's not going to do that. Right. Right, so... Uh, yeah. Stiff. Yeah, exactly. So, um, oh, we've got some orc skulls here. You doing orc skulls? Yeah, we're doing orc skulls. Oh, guys, another thing we did include in the kit, I'm working on skulls now. So I've done meat, done birds, uh, put a base coat on some barrels. Now I'm doing skulls. And I will say that the GW skull kit, the Citadel skull kit, really uh, pick it up if, if you're looking for skulls. Don't, I, I don't know, don't uh, shy away from it. I know sometimes they're like, oh, do I really want to spend GW prices on just this one thing? It's actually fairly reasonably priced. It's like 25 bucks. And oh my God, it's amazing. You get so many skulls and some of them are really cool. Um, so definitely very into this kit, into the Citadel Skull nice. kit. Nice. And I'm doing my skull recipe on these, uh, which is my basic recipe for slightly warmed skulls. Um, so I do Mornfang Brown, then I do uh, Sepia Wash on them, and then I'm going to hit them with uh, Talarin Sand. Uh, oh, excuse me, I do the Talarin Sand before uh, the Sepia. And then I do Ushanti Bone, but you can also do a ter Terminus Stone if you want to be like a little cooler uh, or a little more neutral as opposed to like the warmer, subtle, like, oh man, I just dumped this in the wrong pot, but that's actually okay. A little cooler to like fit in more? Yeah, exactly. Be, be part of the crowd. Uh, but you can also, you, honestly, if you've done like a brown and then a brown wash, you can also even just do a white because that'll make it have like more of a bleached look. That's actually how I'm doing it on my Thousand Suns bases um, to give it like this look of a of an area where they've just been like almost totally bleached out. Uh, kind, of, kind of a cool look as well. In which case I do the browns under, but then I, like I said, I just finish with a white pretty much. It's a cool look. Now Zach, here's a new technique mm -hmm. that I don't think we've ever done. Okay. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask if it's a good idea. What if I just dip, the, oh, just dip these in the sepia? Um, Stone, come on in. I mean, we have two airbrushes here, you know. Yeah, uh, but then, Zach, you gotta wash the airbrush. Uh, Where is the sepia? I mean, dipping right is there. a thing, right? Like, people did that. Sure, go ahead, try it. <laughs> no. Yeah, we should see. No, let's see how it comes out. All right, why, well, why not? All right, we're gonna. We're gonna find out. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I, I guess I know how it's gonna come out. Um, I, it's gonna be heavy. So, well, yeah, that's the thing. So what I like about about airbrushing washes is that like, you can get a little bit more gradient there. Um, people like to imagine that washes will do like this magic work of you for you where they will fall into recesses, and that part's true. Mm -hmm. What's not true is that on flatter surfaces, it, it will behave in kind of unruly ways. It'll splotch. It'll splotch. So yeah. with an airbrush, we can target the recesses, go ahead and have it blast into the recesses and fall there anyway, and then kind of be, oh, you, you I hate what I'm yeah. doing right now. No, I, I know. It's, I, it's not a good idea, but let's see it. 
Well, we can do A-B test it. I'll Let's dip do, one. Sure, I love it. I'll dip one and I'll spray the other. I love it. Well, oh, A-B testing is great. We'll just have to throw half of them away. Let's <laughs> shake I, I don't know which half, but I, I have an idea which half. <laughs> we have more of these, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Also, we, we like, have a lot of these. We have plenty of gubbins. Like, if ogres don't have bloody, if ogres and gargants don't have bloody uh, bags oh, that they're geez. carrying around, I really can't bring myself to do this. I gotta... just, yeah, just do it. It's good. Okay, that's a lot. Zoom in on you doing it. Even. Oh, let's, that's, let's, let's, let's let everybody that's see it. So much. All right, we went all the way in. And okay, that's okay. It's... I think what you do now is you dip it in some clean water, or uh, shake it. Okay. Or shake I mean, it. We have water. Shake. It's dip and shake, right? That's the recipe, dip and it's shake. Shaking is not gonna do anything. It's gonna go everywhere. No, you just like like whip it into a towel. Yeah. It's not gonna go, the sacks are gonna fall off. <laughs> oh yeah. That's more likely to happen. So should I dip it in water? Let me see, may I see? Yeah, it's, I mean, oh, well, that's a big drop on the table Or you table could now. take the brush and remove a dry brush, a dry paint brush. Okay. And, and sort of and just like, soap up. Honestly, like, the, they, the, they look fine. They look good. I mean, because of what they are, like, here. They just look zoom in. darker. They just look darker. Yeah. Yeah. And, and here's the deal. We can hit them. You can do this. And then with an airbrush, we could hit them with the Chalaran sand a little bit again. <laughs> if we wanted to bring them back up. Which we maybe we don't even need to do. Oh man, this all right. Well, I'm gonna spray the other. True, true to my word. Yeah, we're let's gonna do AB it. test. Sure. Let's get some sepia in this airbrush. Yeah. And uh, I like it. Maybe a tone for our sins. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, but now we know, and and everybody got to see it happen. Like I think it looks okay. Like it's fine. Like yeah, Cobra confirms you have to dip and flick. I I, I mean yeah. I I don't think you have to do that for these. But I, I, I can imagine you might want to do that for some things. It, it also didn't like... It's a very similar effect, to be honest. It's just more excessive. It's, well, it's so heavier. What I was, yeah, what I was kind of saying, so like, they're probably done. And what I was saying is that if you wanted to, and it's okay that you didn't do this, but you could have avoided like some of the more raised areas that way. Mm -hmm. um, and you did a little bit, it looks like. So like, that's all. And... It's I mean, just one is way darker than the other. That's all. That's also. Can I see? Let's have like a, the A/B test. We don't even need to label them because we know which one got done. I think they look very similar. Yeah, but this one. Oh, this one. Right here got dunked, for sure. The much darker, heavier. They look. They look fine, and because of the nature of what it is. It, it's going to be fine. So what we're saying here on Hobby Titans is go ahead, dunk your models. In well, paint. these. <laughs> That's what we're saying. I, I don't know about... We're endorsing... I, I don't know. Taking I, a primed I, model and I'm, dunking I'm it... I'm going to stop you right there. ...in a tub of <laughs> contrast paint. That, that's a wash. Don't dunk in contrast. It's too... Contrast is also a wash. They're no, but washes. it's too thick. Uh, um, I'd be you, like, this we is, should like, this is the classic recipe for painting hordes of skeletons and zombies. Mm -hmm. Is you paint, spray paint white, and then dunk in minwax, or in this case, you're doing a sepia wash. Mm -hmm. It's essentially the same thing. Yeah. And then you flick off the excess. I'm into it. And you let it dry. That's and like you do 100 skeletons in a day. When you don't have an airbrush. Can I show my my skulls here, which is also a, an approach for skeletons? <laughs> so here now, I'm, I'm I've hit these with Talarin sand. And you can see I just like made a, sh a strip of the window caulking. So parts of each of these skeletons isn't going to get painted. And that's okay because they're going to go in bases and they're going to go in places where part of it's going to have to get glued somewhere. So I did a variety. Like I did one laying down. I do some standing up. So we'll have a variety then to work with and put on, on all kinds of different uh, surfaces. Um, here's the each one of the skull kits comes with one of these big things. And I don't know what I'm going to do with this yet, but I am—I know when I paint it, I'm going to do a little zenithal here on it. Um, Bridger and I were seeing if we could identify different skulls from the skull kit. And one of them just says beast. One beast skull. And so it's I think... like a giant gene stealer. Here are the orc skulls. And there's also like probably an ogre skull up here. So our different skulls. I'm doing a little. I'm being a little zen and thawy here, as I do these, especially these bigger ones like the orcs and the 
And the ogres. Back to some human skulls. Looks like there's some... What kind of Nurgle guy is that with the one horn? A, uh... Oh, a, uh... Plague bear. Plague bear skulls. Plague bears do that. Again, doesn't... I thought they, like, dematerialized when you killed them, but... Uh, maybe not no, maybe. in AOS, they're real. Oh, fun. I think. That's one of the few differences for chaos in AOS. But, or between AOS and 40k. I think, I think demons are actually real in AOS. Okay, there we go. So my next step on the skulls, oh, all the skulls are up here. I'll put them down here so you guys can see. So my next step on the skulls is I'm gonna do sepia on them. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm gonna let that dry for a sec. And then I'm gonna do Ubshanti Bone. But again, you actually could at this point do, after, after the sepia, you could do like white um, if you want to do a little more bleach luck. Or if the skull is particularly big, um, which is maybe this very large one that I might use, you could do both. Like you could do Ubshanti Bone and then hit it with a little bit of white in, in a few particular areas. Uh, so how are they looking? Uh, one's taking a lot longer to dry. Oh, okay. But... They look great. Well, I think after the skulls, there's a couple other miscellaneous gubbins here, but I think after the skulls, we should start decorating. What do you think? Let's, I think we can start decorating right now. The decorate, the, they're back here. You want to grab some of your guys? Let's grab, let's grab some gargans. Yeah. So we've got a few things we're going to decorate here uh, on stream because that's really what there. gubbins are all about, right? This is the fun part, the big reveal. Yeah. Seeing the gubbins on the models. I forgot how big gargans were. It's been too long. I've they're, missed them. They're your gargans, Frederick. Maybe. I guess, yeah. I don't I feel I feel like there's Zach's gargans. He puts so much love into them. And I just put they're, so much They're the studio's gargans. Willpower into other people making them. <laughs> <laughs> They're the studios. Garden. That was really like an uh, an illithid moment. Are you spraying water out of your airbrush? I'm spraying a wash, a sepia wash. Hmm. Um, you want some of these gubbins over here to get going? Let me pass them to you here in a second. Yeah, those are more gargant gubbins than. Yeah, but save me some birds and meat, please. I do want some birds. Of course, I wouldn't dare use. Oh, we've glue somewhere, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, and this is cool, too. I'm going to show you guys. So here's our super glue. We're going to use the AK glue. Okay. And then what I also picked up, because you might be a little apprehensive, as, as we are, sometimes about super gluing something to a model it's finished mm -hmm. because it can get that frosty look. So um, I picked up the AK eraser and used it today, and it works. It's awesome. There's um, a link to it in the video description. There's a link to it in the video description. Um, so we'll use a little bit of this in case we get any frostiness. And on the Ogre Mall pot that's behind me, um, I, there is some frostiness from when I glued it, and I'll show you guys. Uh, I left some of it frosty just to show you guys. Stay frosty. Yeah. This is pretty amazing stuff. It, I have always been terrified of super glue. You hate gluing. super glue. I've heard you say, like, you're not into... I do, but, like, also, if something... One of my models breaks, I always just have this huge sigh, uh, inner sigh. of yeah. like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to glue it with super glue, and then 48 hours later, it's gonna have all this white frosting nonsense all yep. over it, and then I have to repaint the model. It's gonna be a huge chore. And I didn't realize until you showed me this stuff that it even existed. I didn't realize until I saw it in the and store. And it's amazing. Yeah. The, like a product that you can paint, brush paint over super glue after it's dried, and it makes that white stuff go away. Yep. <laughs> it's great. Very cool. Bridger, we're yep. gonna have to finish the barrels off stream, I'm afraid. That's okay. But they're pretty close. We've got some ropes and some barrels that we're gonna finish off stream uh, because our skulls are just about done. We're at two hour mark, so I say we spend the rest of it doing a little decorating. Let me uh, wrap up the skulls here in a second. Uh, the last step is the Ushanti bone mm -hmm. on them. And so, Bridger, if we can, we could zoom in a second here. Let's do it. I'll show that to you guys now. So here they are. They are mostly drying. Let's see if they're done. This big one's still a little damp. Yeah. Okay. So you can see. I think the sepia gives them like a little bit more depth, which I like. Um, and now, 
we are gonna carefully kind of go over these with Ubshanti bone. And we're gonna, um, you know, this is really a transparent look um, that's gonna go over top of these. So uh, you, can, you can pull back or add more in certain areas, even on these tiny ones. Um, so I get it going here, I always check my flow. Um, because I clean my airbrushes so much and I put so much water through them, after I start blasting like this, something like, like this, I don't know if you guys saw, there's always like a water blast that comes out, and I want to get that water blast out before I uh, start painting because it's a little unpredictable. All right, so here we go. So now we're going to start shanti boning our skulls, and we can we can do different we can do different levels here. So you can see, maybe I want this. Maybe I want. Um, let's do some aim. Here we go. This guy right here. I want this one to be a little brighter. And there we go. Uh, the horn, there's a little splatter. I don't love that, but that's okay. Uh, the base of the horn on these, on the, on the plague bearers, I want to stay dark. So we'll do it like that. Just leave it there. Perfect. Okay, and then here we go. Hit these guys. With a light color, especially, it accumulates on the tip of your airbrush. That's where we use the, the toothbrush because uh, your airbrush is then going to, the needle is going to pull the, the drying pigment back in and that's how you get clogs. So that's why we use the toothbrush. That's also how you get the splatter, by the way. When you rest it for a little bit, you know, if I stop, and I use my airbrush, you see the splatter comes out and that's, that's why that happens. So uh, stay on top of it with a toothbrush, the lighter the color gets, especially. Okay, there we go, some nice skulls. I'm just gluing some knives onto the Gargant's belts. Because, you know, Gargant's, they love their knives. It's funny, these knives must actually be for Ogors. Definitely. Because these knives are large enough yes. for a man crusher Gargant to actually kind of use as a toothpick. Like a paring knife, you know? Oh, yeah, cool. Now, I did do mostly even numbers, Bridger, with the intent that you and I would share them. Okay. So, um, feel free to, you know, use like half. Oh, See I all that can't even imagine like using that. half of... We, we went overboard on Gubs. It's Gubs City over here. Mmm. Where could this steak go? I think this steak. What do you think about a Gargant holding a steak in his hand? About to eat it? Yeah, I think it works. I like it. He's mm. palming it. Palming a steak. Okay, here come the orc skulls, which I'm extra excited about. Ooh, got a little spl Ooh, getting a little splatter here. Not doing enough toothbrushing. Not keeping your airbrush clean enough, Zach. After all that. Well, actually, I think um, that I had the, the thing I, yeah, right, that I don't like happening happen, which is that it pulled a little bit back in. So we'll have to do a quick blast out of this. So we can go to a different view, unless people just want to see me do that. No, I think people want to see. Your decoration. Let me put a bird on this guy's shoulder. Here go. I'm a bird. That's great. That's going to break off so fast. <laughs> and we got this this Gargan here. He's holding meat in his hand. Oh, cool. Wait, let me see. That's his meat hand. He's just palming it. He's just palming a steak. He's, he's doing a magic trick. Hello. You know where you put a card? You, you palm it in your hand? <laughs> he's like... He's doing it with meat. I love it. I love how he's just like He's going to pull a steak out from behind some baby Gargan's <laughs> ear. Somebody's ear. He goes That's up to right. a big behind a baby. He's like, oh, you got a steak behind your ear. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, he's running at you not because he wants to eat you or kill you. He just wants to, like, show you his magic trick. I love it. Oh, my God. A steak. Oh, wow. These birds get really tiny. The little, the little birds are, the, the, the incorrect, the reverse uh, <laughs> magpies are very tiny. I think Bodie McBoatback needs a vulture right on the boat. And that, that one definitely will break off. 
in a matter of seconds. But I'm the really birds nervous. don't have great contact points. I am coming to that realization. Oh no, we did it! That bird is on that boat, so we're just never gonna touch that again. Brett, we're putting birds on things. I know it's so artistic. I feel good about this. Oh, that bird's real small. I need a bird for this hammerhead. You want, you want a bird? I can. No, I don't. Can hand you a bird. Who's to say Tao don't have birds, right? Bird for scale and everything. Yeah, mmm. I need to find a good place for it. You know what I need to do is, you know, like the hatch opens up on like the, the tanks and there's like the tank commander sitting mm -hmm. out. They I need to have him like a, a bird on his shoulder. Yep. There you go. Oh my gosh. There's always a place for birds. All right, our skulls are mostly ready. I want to hit the big one with a little bit of white. I'm going to use Minotaur Skull White. That's what it's for, skulls. And I'm going to hit the big one with just a little bit of white. Kind of tempted to hit the orcs with a little bit of white in the ogre one. Or what I think is an ogre skull, but um, I don't think it's necessary. Hmm. I think this goes right there. Is it a belly shield? Where does the shield belong? Maybe it's a fanny shield. Mm. That could work. Mm. Uh, thank you, Kaldorf. Hey, Titans. Can't wait to see these models on an AOS stream. I need to really get my Mega Gargants and Kragnos done. Destruction Army is so good. Did you ever... Did Kragnos ever happen? I haven't gotten them yet, but I will. Uh, you know, I'm trying to trick Adrian into doing a... Uh, I'm trying to trick Adrian into doing a stream where I paint Kragnos and he paints one of the dragons. Oh, the, the new star dragons? Yeah, and then the we, mega dragons? And then we play with them the next day. Oh, that's gonna be dope. Um, I think the challenge is that he he really want, he's only interested in Stormcast, and I can't say I blame him, uh, in the context of like having the all dragon army. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see if we can get him to, to or somebody to play Stormcast with just one of the just one dragon. One of the big name dragons. Like yeah. a reasonable number of dragons, not all dragons. Yeah, I mean that's going to be a list. And you know, like, you know, we've actually seen this a lot with with AOS where they I mean that's kind of what shield. Oh yeah. That's kind that's kind of what that's kind of what my army is, right? My army is like All dragons? Well no, you take an army and you make like this more like you remove the reasonable parts and triple down on the unreasonable parts? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, and it's to some degree, like, uh, usually maybe more elite or more, like, lots of giant mayhem about. Oh, a tongue. I feel like we can... Oh! <gasps> did, did you... Was this painted the whole time and I just didn't realize? The What's people in, in the hand? Those so, got painted. Somebody painted them. It wasn't me. I'm so happy about that. Hmm. Okay, I'm. Bring, I thought that was one of the things we cut. I'm bringing the sacks back up mm -hmm. a little bit after the dip and the wash, and you're not gonna be able to tell the difference between the two sacks. I think. Well, that's good to hear. Are those um, Bridger's sacks or your sacks? Um, these bags can be used for either me or Bridger. <laughs> Sorry, me. So. I was hoping it would be Zach's sacks. Uh, nope. <laughs> They're for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, now, uh, Zach, yes. something I'm running into here mm -hmm. is that Ogors like to hang things off hooks. And Gargants aren't hook people. And gag Gargants don't have anywhere to hang a hook. It's something I'm, I'm... Oh, I think we can find a place. Let's see. Um, realizing. I mean, is that correct? The thing I've just done. Yeah, that looks cool. All right, let's, let's get a little, little closer here. I've dangled a tongue off his... Belt. His arm's gonna be in the way no matter how I do this. There's a tongue right here. Dangling off his belt. I'm gonna glue it. Do it. do it. And then we'll get all these on the glam. We'll glam it up. Yeah. Oh. Okay, now the last thing I'm gonna do... Uh, we're almost done here. And I can start decorating. But the last thing I'm gonna do is spray the bottom of the sacks with a little bit of blood. 
Because these are like, you know. You don't know what's in there. Could something something that bleeds in there. Yeah. Or maybe the blood's from the outside. Maybe he bludgeoned somebody with the sack. That's right. I like that story. Hmm. I think we gotta go shield again. Wouldn't it be like just like AOS to have rules for the bludgeon sacks that are like, you know, sock full of quarters? <laughs> That's what's in it. It's just a it's just a bunch of quarter coins. It would coins, probably do yeah. something ridiculous like too, like gold, gold hit rolls of on, of sixes on this army, cause a mortal wound back. Straight to mortal wound. Has has no no like when you hit them. Six means you hit their coin purse and coins fly in your face <laughs> and, and sh sh cut your... I mean, that's like one of the best things about Mornfangs is you give them the shield and it's like oh, saves of six. It's deal described mortal as, back. Yeah, 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 all the weapons that Mornfang has that like you got to save against, they got to roll a wound. It says on a six, on a roll six, they push your weapon aside and punch you in the face and it causes a mortal wound. Yeah, yeah. That's what, that's what... No, Ogors have um, the iron... They can either have two weapons, which lets them reroll hits. It's like twin. Your range. guys, your guys, yeah. Or they can have a weapon and the iron fist, and the iron fist is sixes to save deal mortal black. Right. Because they push your weapon aside and punch you in the face. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a mortal wound. Mm hmm That's the same level. It's a great of, representation. Same level of damage as like a dragon breath weapon or like a comet. Yes. A slain. Summoning a comet from the outer space to smash into you. And an ogre punching you in the face. And this is they're, insane. They're equivalent, yeah. Now listen, as Bridger, as you're applying the shields and stuff, yes. I was taking some of the shields earlier today and trying to see where they were going, my guys. And I actually didn't find a lot of options. Oh. So um, uh, that's why. So I, you're uh, saying I should use shields? I'm saying, like, if you want to go heavy on. Go and, shield and, and look, Of course, that makes sense, right? Because they came with your. The shields and all the plates are from your, are from the gargants, right? Oh. The tongues and the meat are from the ogors, right? Which um, is, explains why I'm finding and all my guys have hooks. A all lack of them. purchase yeah, exactly, for hooks. Exactly. Wow. Look at um, this. The sacks are done. The bloody sacks. They're going to be good. Well, let's for both let's of get us. a closer look at those. Oh yeah, let's look at the bloody sacks. So here oh, are the bloody sacks. Very compelling. You can actually now see post AB testing that there's no difference between the sacks. So what we're saying is dunk all your models. You can dunk them. In washes. I mean, I honestly, I think I would still use the airbrush just because <laughs> it's, for me, it f seems easier. I don't know. <laughs> you just like, you got the airbrush out, you just do it. I don't know. <laughs> right? I mean, sorry. I'm, I, I guess here's the skull. Here's the big skull. I'm not sure where, where oh, we're going to do good. that yet. Uh, yeah, yeah, where's the big skull going to go? I don't know. You, If you want to use it, you can use it. I have another one. You get one big skull in the skull kit. The skull kit's so cool. Um, here it is. Here's the here's the loadout for the skull kit. I I love these different horned ones. Three hundred and forty skulls. You get so many skulls. It's That's so great. So many skulls. The normal uh, Morn Fang kit. Here's my one of my Morn Fangs. He comes with this skull to go on like the banner. But I was able to use one of these skulls. To get a little variety in, in, in a second Morn Fang. So that's like six cents a skull. Yeah, it's crazy. That's what a ratio. Yeah, I'm into it. Now, not all skulls are equal. The giant not skull. Small. There's only one. Probably like four dollars for that giant skull. <laughs> yeah, the giant skull, get the price gets back up to being a little bonkers. <laughs> all right, well, the first guy I'm gonna decorate for sure is my Frost Lord on Stonehorn. I think he needs bird and tongue for sure. He At the minimum, bird he, and tongue. He definitely needs a bird. Um, and what I actually really want to do is give him a little, give him a couple of the, the blood beaks. Like he's got a little flock on him. I'm like unreasonably happy with how these birds turned out on the Gargants. I think it adds like a scale. Birds are, birds they on the Gargants is, is like where Really it's at. touch yeah. up the model. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's okay. do another. It makes it artistic. It does. It's very artistic. Uh, let's do some shields. Gotta put a bird on it. Always got to be putting birds on things. Oh, you know what I'm going to show peeps before I put birds on things? Let's take a look. Uh, I want to show people the uh, stuff that makes frosty stuff go away. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. I thought you were going to show people your award for winning. Oh, this is your award for winning Best Painted. Oh, you know, oh my gosh, you know, it was very funny. We were chatting about this. Uh, my award for Best Painted is behind me. It's the Daughters of Cain box. But I was telling some people, I was telling Brad, I was telling my wife, I was saying, oh my God, the guy did such an amazing job. It was such a great event. Um, 
Uh, I don't I don't know that he watches, but Sonny, if you're watching, you did a killer job on that event. What up, Sonny? And I will say this one thing though, Sonny. Okay. I All was right. I don't know where I was best painted, which was super cool. Uh, I was mm -hmm. very humbled and honored to win that. There's so definitely some other armies there that I think it could have gone to as well. Uh, and I will say that um, there were I didn't get a trophy, and this makes me sound so arrogant, but I just wanted like a little trophy. I love my little trophies when did, I win like best. Now hold painted. on, Zach. Did other people get trophies? And the you didn't? people who won uh, like. The first, second, and third right, place. Right. Did get trophies. They, yeah, okay. they got, he made these beautiful 3D printed trophies. They were yeah. so cool. Um, yeah, well, you're going to have to play better next time then. Yeah, I had to play better to win a trophy, um, I guess, as it turns out. But um, Or worse. Or, or worse, oh, right? Yeah. The, the last, last place last guy place got, place got, got Gets one. Gets a wooden spoon? But no, they called it that, but it was another one of the beautiful 3D printed trophies. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, and yeah, like I have one from BAO Narrative 2019 or mm -hmm, something like that, mm -hmm. and I got like a little plaque, and I'm like mm -hmm. so proud of it, right? So like, I was like, oh cool, I want this little trophy, but... Uh, you know, me and Brian have like dozens of them lying around. If you want trophies, we can just give you trophies. Yours are for but... playing. Yeah. And... I don't know, I don't want that. We have a... In fact, they're just littered also, they're around not, the studio. Like, I didn't win them, that's part of what it is, right? Like. Well, but you won the lack of trophy here. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> I won the lack of trophy. Okay, here we go. Can we get a zoom? <laughs> yeah. So here's my Ogre or Ogre Maw pot. Uh, Bridger purchased this and assembled it. I bought it. He has an Ogre Maw Tribes army coming. I have Beast Claw Raider. So this is our shared pot. Um, eventually, when we play our armies against each other, we're going to have to roll off. I think, no, I think it actually works for both factions. Oh, that's so cool. Put I don't in the think middle. I think it's indiscriminate. And I think we can have two. <laughs> they both just, work for both of us. Oh, plus, plus like a, somebody needs to be there to empty it. Right. So that person's going to die, get put in the pot, and then <laughs> somebody else is going to come up and empty it, and that person's going to die. It's going to be so great, and our ogres are just going to keep healing the whole time. I love it. Okay, well, anyway, ogre uh, shenanigans aside, here we go. This is what we're talking about. You guys, have all, we've all had this experience. Here's like the frosty stuff. Now, ironically, could look cool yeah, on my snow-based army. Kind of into it. Um, but I, I'm going to remove it because I, 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 I could put my own snow. I actually am going to add some snow, I think, up like that guy caught up here. Um, Bridger is saying like, oh, you got to add more snow. And I, I wanted to, but this is a big fire. You know, most of the snow would be melted. So I might add a little more over here. And it's a cool model. Um, I, I've got like my, it's got this little butcher block here. And I've got like the blood... Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, uh, this stuff, what we do, it, it's kind of runny, actually. So you have to, I'm, I, what I found was to put it basically on a brush. And it doesn't mess around. It goes, it goes away. Wow, that was like instantaneous. Pretty much instantly. Get this stuff then off, what I found. Like, rub the stuff off because it, it will... I mean, like... It what? will leave a new frost. <laughs> no, it won't leave a frost, but you can see... Uh, let me see the application earlier where it is. Uh, down here. It might be hard to see on camera, but it, it's like just like a different... Var it's like a different finish on the model. Right. Yeah. It catches um, the light a little different. It catches the light a little different, exactly. So, um, but there it is. So, that is your final go-ahead to... Gubbins up your models post models being finished because uh, if you can get the AK eraser and we have the link again on our on our on this, but if you can get it, um, it, it will make sure you don't have any frosty issues going on. Now, Zach, is is that essentially the same as like a, a matte varnish or a semi gloss varnish or some sort of just like acrylic medium? Well, I've found that I kind of want to try that next. I found that uh, you're you're asking like. If I if I have the frosty super glow thing and I and I varnish it, will the frosty thing go away? Yes, that's what I'm asking. I've found that it hasn't. Have you oh, found? Interesting. Have you found that it has? I have not tried it. Yeah, I think that's why people are so nervous about it. Yeah, I have this issue with varnishing models, and I know we've talked about this on the stream before. That, but like, I have have very rarely ever varnished models because I never feel like they're done. Because mm. I get a model like 80%, and then mm -hmm. I'm like, cool, I want to paint this other model because I, like, yes. I like playing with painted models. So I always, like I very rarely get a model to 100% because I've always got like this massive backlog of other stuff that I want to yeah. get to 80% so that I can play with it. 
And so I just end up not varnishing. But the reality is you should absolutely varnish whenever you're at a stopping point because you can just paint over the varnish. It's fine. Yes. Uh, but for some reason, I didn't realize that until recently. And, uh, and now I'm going to go back and, at some point here pretty soon and, and varnish everything. Man, but yeah, I have very little experience with, with varnish. These ribs look delish. I kind of want to eat these ribs. Don't. I mean, I, I know. <laughs> They're a toy, Zach. I can't eat the toys, but... Mm. Pretty, pretty yummy. Man, when is our... Do we have an AOS stream on the Kalendar? We do. We do. No, oh, we do. We do. But we can't talk about it. It's soon, though. It's soon. Prepare, prepare yourself, Mr. Chase. For AOS is on the horizon. It's coming soon. To a theater dinner. Have you guys seen Shang-Chi? While I was in Vegas, the casino, the hotel that had a casino that had a movie theater in it, had a movie theater, right? So I went to see Shang-Chi. It's a great movie. I haven't. You should, you should see it. It's okay. A, it's a great movie. I thoroughly enjoyed it. We, uh, we went, Leah gave me permission to choose the movie one night, and it was either going to Brett, be... Brett, you say that? Okay. First of all, Brett has an announcement about uh, his, his life. His, his life. Uh, Brett's significant other is a dear friend of ours, Leah. He, you make it sound like Leah's, she gave you permission to choose the movie one. No, no, like, sorry, I, I, should, I should reframe that. We take turns. It was like, your turn. Right. It was my turn. Yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> that, that, you're right. That came across, that came across strange. Uh, it was my turn to choose the movie, and it was either Shang-Chi or um, Free Guy. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and, and you I chose, chose not I, Shang Chi. I chose Free Guy. Yeah. yeah, I think you might have made a mistake there. Uh, Free Guy was pretty good. Shang Chi was excellent. Yeah, I think I think Shang Chi would have been would have been good. I was in a little bit more of like a goofy movie than like a oh the world's in danger let's go save it kind of. Right. Thing. Yeah. It was more just a like a what kind of movie am I in the mood for? That's than, fair. Than a oh I think this will be better than that one. Anyway, announcement is while I was gone we got engaged. Yeah. Congrats. Congrats. Engaged Congratulations, Brad. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, which is super exciting. It is super exciting. Yeah. Um, never done that before. <laughs> You're going to have to invite all of chat to your wedding. <laughs> Welcome, chat. Uh, well, yeah, we don't, we don't have any We're plans. We're going to live made. stream the wedding. Live stream. We, we've not made any plans, uh, so don't know any details yet. But um, Other than the live streaming part, that is locked in for just, sure. The only thing we've planned is that we're going to get married. It's cool. <laughs> He's ignoring you. Which... He is. That's okay. That's, I think, the best response. Don't hang it off. <laughs> no, that I looked ridiculous. I didn't. I wasn't going to do it. I don't know why. I, I regret that you saw it. <laughs> it looks so, <laughs> so Oh, it stays, though. Oh, no. Wait, leave oh, it. Oh, it's, it's, like it it's, it's like a little carrot for the stone horn. <laughs> you got to turn it a little bit. It kind of hooks in here, this little chicken leg. It's ridiculous. And he can, so here, I will show you guys what I did though so far on my Frost Lord. Mm -hmm. I gave him a little, little pair of the, the blood beak birds here. Yep. Okay, and one's kind of looking down here, one's looking off to the side a little bit, and then over here. Oh, we got a lengua there. We got a tongue. Excellent use of the tongue. Yeah. And I think we're going to call it a theft for him. Would, uh,. Would you be at all interested in seeing some gargants? Of course, yeah. All right. Hop in my spot there. And well, we're gonna we're gonna go through some gargants here. First of all, uh, oh, this guy got renamed. He can't be called Baghead because we learned that was that meant something. Uh, he's got a bird on Zach, his shoulder. Zach there. Head. Zach head. Zach head. There we go. Zach head. We'll call him Zach. Mm. Um, so he's got a Don't nice like little it. bird on his shoulder there, <laughs> and I can already tell we're gonna get some frosting under there, so we're gonna need to. Erase that one day. Uh, and he's got a tongue on his belt. And I think he's looking pretty fly. I think that's all I put on him. I'm gonna take him away. Put him on, we'll put him back on the glam cam. You know, the tongue on the Gargant, that would be like the equivalent of one of us hanging like a piece of beef jerky on our belt. <laughs> like a single guess, strip yeah. of beef jerky. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey guys, I'm gonna eat this later. Here's a strip of beef jerky on my belt. It comes in the right like proportions. Is the bird? Birds for scale are excellent on gargants. So he yeah. has a bird on the horn. The bird is cool on, on the gargants. Very cool. And then uh, butt shield. 
Because, you know, got to keep your butt protected. Yeah, I like the butt shield. Wouldn't want your butt getting hurt. Some, uh, some like, gloom spike gets was going to stab him in there. Like, what? <laughs> Go around the backside and see that. And then um, the Kraken Eater already had a lot of really cool gubs. He uh, was pretty gub heavy. But we, he we, did not have a bird. And we now emphas we emphasized he's a bird. Yeah, he's got, he's got one of the vultures. Bird, very important. And then... Uh, the I butt shield else? also gives you plus one damage on your sitting attack. Uh, yeah. When you sit, yes. when you sit on an enemy model, yeah, you get plus one damage. Yeah, you. Um, no, it probably causes a mortal wound. And then this guy got a bunch of gubs. He got he got his own butt shield, and he got a pocket knife, but he doesn't have pockets, so it's just kind of in his Is belt. Is that a kukri? Uh, it appears to just be a poorly shaped knife. I like see. it, it just has. Uh, some chips on the blade. Uh, and is that all I get? I think, I thought, hey, I guess he didn't get a shield. Some of them got more shields. Anyway, that's probably enough Gargant. Yeah. For a lifetime. Awesome. I did a couple more, but. Well, I decorated my, my Frost Lord and I'll do some more off stream. But Bridger, I think we did it. I think we did it. We made a big old pile of gubbins. Oh, we didn't put any bloody sacks or anything yet, but I am excited for bloody sacks. Well, it'll happen. Things. Bloody bags. It'll. It'll wow. happen, and um, that's it. So, we have some cool stuff coming up. Um, tomorrow there's a game, as always. You're playing that game, right? I think I am, yeah. Yeah. Um, do you guys know what you're playing? Oh, I don't have any idea. Well, there's a game on our sister network, uh, Tabletop Titans. There's a game Saturday. Mm -hmm. I don't know that John any will be playing. John will be there. I don't know that anybody knows what that game is. I don't know that anybody knows what tomorrow's game is. Either. Okay, well, there's some games, if you like watching Warhammer 40K, streamed live, by these guys and us, really, right? Uh, you can see that. And then what I will say, next Wednesday, uh, we are going to be painting uh, some aeronautica terrain mm -hmm. that Brett is feverishly 3D printing or yes, preparing. Yes, I'm super to, excited for this. Yeah. Um, we're going to... This might be a hint of things to come, maybe. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to uh, show you guys some 3D printed aeronautica terrain, paint it up. And, uh, and that's next week on Wednesday. Yeah, we're excited. Um, we're going to do a little aeronautica uh, in the pipeline. And of course, as you guys know, if you saw, um, you know, Brett and I are big aeronautica fans. Mm -hmm. And it, it, as you know, um, the Space Marines and the Eldar are coming out. So yep. we're going to be grabbing them ASAP as possible, as we like to say around here. Yep. Um, so that we can paint them and play them because, you know, I love aeronautica and I love space elves. And I love killing space marines, so now I get to do it in the sky, my favorite. Uh, Bridger, anything? Anything you're up to? Up to anything fun? No, nah, I'm just work. I'm all the things I'm working on. I can't talk about. So okay, it's a it's a fun life. So fun stuff, but can't talk about it. There, yeah, there's a lot. We've been saying this for weeks now. There's, like a, there's lot. a lot coming. There's a lot coming. Yeah. Um, I can say uh, that this weekend we'll be filming a recap of the Vegas team tournament. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. So me and John are going to get on the couch okay. with Adrian. We're going to have a little chat. That's going to be fun. And then uh, that'll be released sometime next week, I think. Sometime soon. Uh, keep and an this, eye out this week. The Goonhammer uh, the Goonhammer recap should be out as well. Right? Went out. Yep. Yep. And keep an eye out for uh, last week. We did Galaxy Nails. If you haven't seen that stream yet, mm -hmm. uh, and we are we actually have a video we're still working on a little bit to put that together. I'm still working on, uh, and that should be out on Friday. So. Other than that, I think we got anything. Brett, anything else? No, just excited for next week. Yeah, lots of fun stuff. Uh, great guys, as we always like to say around here, be kind to each other, yourselves, and always be creating. Bye.